Hello everyone, this is Rob Cameron. I am Managing Editor for the Kaleidocast, and we are here today to play The Bloody Handed Name of Bronze by Joshua A.C. Newman. Uh, we're playing this game because, uh, for a couple different reasons, one, the game is amazing, two, uh, we uh, publish a story that's set in the world of this game, uh, a story written by Mimi Mondel and then uh, acted, recorded, voiced by Jose Fibas. And uh, the third reason we're doing this is for, for the Patreon, so that we can pay all of our authors, actors, uh, artists, all the creatives involved as close to professional uh, pay as possible. And we're very close to that goal, so thank you very much, everyone who's already uh, contributed or subscribed. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. So a little bit about this game. Uh, so The Bloody Handed Name of Bronze is a storytelling RPG where the players um, are telling the story themselves. It's mutual storytelling. There is no DM. We all play the part of DM. And that's really cool because we have some fantastic uh, authors, creatives here to actually show you how to play with Joshua A.C. Newman and hosted by Liam Burke, uh, who's going to take you through this game uh, in real time. So you can actually learn the game yourself and decide to go out and buy the game and play it. The creatives who are going to be walking you through this are Nino Cipri, Danny Lohr, C and C.S. Ikuni. All three of them are amazing authors uh, who, have, between, the, between, the, between the three of them, have written novels, novellas, poetry, poetry collections, short stories, and comics. Uh, so we will definitely talk about the work that they're doing uh, during the gameplay. You're going to get some uh, a little taste of the fantastic stories that they're writing. But what you really see here is them creating stories in real time with you and with each other. Uh, oh, also, you'll see that some of the subscribers have jumped onto the game with us in the chat to be the gods and beings and named beings in this world. Uh, and that's to add flavor text and to add a little bit more drama uh, and comedy uh, to the story that Nino and uh, Claire, CSC Cooney, and Danny are going to be creating. Uh, so having said all that, let's get right to the game. Again, it's hosted by Liam Burke. This is a game being played uh, for the Patreon for the Kaleidocast. So if you like what you hear, love what you hear, or just want to support some great writers, please go to our uh, Patreon site so you can just go ahead and Google Kaleidocast uh, on Patreon. And uh, yeah, thank you. Hope to and get ready for Season 3 of the Kaleidocast coming in early 2021. And we are recording. Just keep on doing whatever you're doing. As they appear, I shall name them. <laughs> you shall give them names. <laughs> the chat reads, Carlos was a spleen in the last game. Yes, in Ooh. fact, he was. He Carlos was. behind me as my kid, sir. Yeah, that's what we, I was talking about. And. Uh, um, our gods have appeared. Just gonna appear here and be like, okay. Hope, <laughs> Hope, Tracy, and Stephen Shuffler are. Oh, Hope has returned, <laughs> <laughs> and not just because of the results of the election. Um, okay, yeah. So, so we are we're ready to roll. Okay, hello, cool. Hello, everyone. So, um, I will be uh, introducing our players now. Um, welcome all and sundry to another edition of the bloody handed name of bronze um a game created by joshua ac newman who is also going to be one of the players um i have some profiles to read i'm going to read them in the order that i was given them so there is no favoritism involved do not worry i did not pick these in any kind of particular order um, we're going to start with nino cipri is a queer and trans non-binary writer editor and educator. They are a graduate of the 2014 Clarion Writers Workshop and earned their MFA in fiction from the University of Kansas in 2019. A multidisciplinary artist, Nino has also written plays, screenplays, and radio features, performed as a dancer, actor, and puppeteer, and worked as a stagehand, bookseller, bike mechanic, and labor organizer. Nino is the award-winning author of Homesick, a short story collection, and Finna, a novella about wormholes, queer heartbreak, and working retail. <laughs> Finna's sequel, Defect, I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, will be published in April 2021. 
Welcome, Nino. Glad to have you here. Glad to be here. Uh, next, we have Danny Lohr, they, them, is a queer writer and editorial from Harlem and the Bronx. Their SFF prose has been in Fireside, Faya, Nightlight, and more. And they've written comics over at Vault, Marvel, DC, and more. When not writing, it's dolls, gunpla, and video games keeping them busy. Welcome, Danny. Also happy to have you here. Um, and lastly, we have C.S.C. Cooney, is the author of World Fantasy Award-winning Bone Swans stories. Her short novel, The twice Drowned Saint, is included in Mythic Delirium's anthology, The Sinister Quartet. Her forthcoming novel, Saint Death's Daughter, will be out with Rebellion in spring of 2022. Other work includes Tor.com novella Desdemona and The Deep, and short fiction and poetry in Jonathan Strachan's anthology, Dragons, Ellen Datlau's Mad Hatters and March Hares, all new stories from the world of Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, Rich Horton's Year's Best Science Fiction and Fantasy, and elsewhere. Welcome, CSC. Do you prefer CSC or Cooney? Which one do you want? Call me Cooney. Oh, Cooney. I'm on your football team. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Cooney. Cooney. So, yes, these are our players. Um, if any of you have anything else that you would like to uh, introduce, as that wasn't covered in these bios. I'll go down the line real quick. Uh, Nino, anything to add? I'm good. You're good. Danny, anything to add? Not right now. Not right so. now. Interrupt me whenever. <laughs> Cooney, anything Cooney. to add? Cooney. I think my bio ran long, so I would like to go back and cut <laughs> half of it, please. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very clear. Cool. Cooney. Never happened. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, Josh, anything, anything to say? Um, about the setting, the book, anything uh, that well, you <clears throat> wanted to throw um, out there before we get started. Yeah, uh, this game was released on the day um, uh, the world shut down at um, at PAX East at the on the last day of February of uh, of I guess this year. I don't know what is time it even it's anymore. Been about six years since then. Yeah, yeah, I think it's March is what we call it. Is the last six years are March. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm really excited that people are getting to play it because I haven't been able to go to um, conventions and demo it. And I'm really excited for this this crew and see what you see what you come up with. Very cool. All right, and I'm Liam Burke. Um, I'm a member of the Brooklyn Speculative Fiction Writers Group as well. Um, I have self-published uh, several collections of short stories, mostly focusing on horror and fantasy. I have a uh, another self-published book that is a fairy tale that I collaborated with um with a illustrator to have some fantastic pictures in and i am currently working on other projects i have a few things uh read on 600 second saga which is a podcast so we are here to play a bloody handed name of bronze so first things that we're going to need to do is make some characters so again um if I would go down the line, but I know that sometimes that's not how people want to do things. Is anybody ready and raring to jump into character creation except for Josh? Oh, real, sorry, uh, real quick. One one thing. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Oh, I'm Rob right. Cameron. I was supposed Cameron. to introduce Cameron. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Uh, so my name's Cameron, uh, or Rob Cameron, depends on how you met me. I'm also a lead organizer for Brooklyn Speculative Fiction Writers and managing editor for the Clydecast at NYC, uh, which is one of the reasons why we're putting together this show. Uh, we're publishing one of the stories from Joshua A.C. Newman's uh, game from Mimi Mondale. And uh, the, the whole point of the podcast is to put together uh, really great authors uh, who have written stories who you might not have heard before, and then put them together with new authors here in the New York, uh, New York City area, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, okay, whatever. Um, and and show <laughs> their great work too, because it's hard to break through. So the people who are uh, who are being published from the podcast for the podcast, uh, they've done a really uh, the hard work of creating something beautiful or scary or dangerous or all of the above. And so this is to help support them and pay them as much as possible for the work and get to a professional pay rate. So if you are watching this uh, on our Facebook live feed, uh, please subscribe so you can get it and become one of the gods. If you're one of the gods, consider subscribing at a higher level so we can get more money for the authors. Uh, and as for the gods themselves, I think Liam will go into exactly what your role is here. I know, uh, I know at least one of them, Hope, 
Uh, she knows her role quite well, but you are going to be, you'll know when it's time for you to kind of enter and be gods, but the entire time you can still be chatting and giving us interesting details and we'll be looking at the chat to make sure that you know you're part of the interactive process so with that i'm going to disappear again until we have our first break sure. in about 30 minutes bye bye uh, so, yes, Liam, you... i would like to um uh i'd like to sit back i'm just going to know the will of the names of the world uh with everybody else um uh because i think three protagonists will probably be plenty for a for sure. a, a streaming show and i just want to be able to make sure that i can help everybody know how to make decisions yeah, sounds great. Um, so yes, all, all you gods and, and goddesses and, and whatnot in the chat, um, your role here is going to be offering as much influence as you can from your lofty realm above the firmament. So <laughs> basically what that means is, is when something should happen or you think something should happen or is happening, we're going to be looking to you to come up with suggestions. So if somebody is, is looking to go through two different doorways and we're not sure which one to go through, you can say, go through the right one because that one's filled with crabs. Or you can say, go through the <laughs> left one because there's a giant lion behind there. Or, you know, you basically will be contributing to how this story is going to go down. Um, very similarly to in mythology, how gods actually influence the world um, through their, their petty or, or lofty goals. So feel free at any point, at any time, to just start typing away and, and putting some suggestions in the chat box. And uh, as deemed appropriate, we will incorporate them into the game. And that's going to include the character creation that we're about to go through. So pushing mortals around until they get their way, making up rules. Exactly. Someone's <laughs> catching on fast because they've been here before and they didn't. <laughs> so. Um, like I was like I was saying, does anybody feel like they're ready and raring to go and they want to give this character creation thing a whirl first? Uh, I know I want to play a faded hero. I, aside from that, I'm not really sure, so I don't mind Let's being do it, part then. of that first. Yeah, it works best if you yell a lot. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, really I have mean. a cat and an occasionally napping wife, so I can't yell too much, but I can put bass in my voice, and I yeah. think that that'll that'll work it out. Bass's voice would be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yes, part of being a faded hero is going to be anytime you perform one of your actions, shouting your name first or using your name first, so that absolutely everybody knows who it is that done fucked them up just now. <laughs> Um, you actually get um, some advantages to that. Okay. So, um, if you would like to share your screen. Uh, yes. Um, with your character sheet up. If you don't have it up yet, feel free yes, to take the I, so I have a <laughs> blank one up. I just have to remember how things work. Um, Sharing-wise, there should be a button on the bottom of the screen. Do you guys see it now? Up arrow. Yep. We're getting there. Yep. We do see things now. Cool. So uh, the, the first thing that you're going to do is this is, of course, a, a game that it is very centered on names. Um, everything's got a name. Everything, important at least, has a name. You're important, so you have a name. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is figure out what your name is. Now, setting-wise, there is that well of names um, mm -hmm. that I sent out. And I'm trying to find it. It's on page so 30. It up. Yes. It is on page 30 of the book. Um, and uh, there's a lot. They're basically syllables that are, that are broken up. Um, and you just string them together. Um, uh, is like, there a certain number that you have to use? or As many as you would like. Until it sounds good to you. Yeah. Until it sounds true. Um. I'm actually going to just straight up do a uh, dot call. I think I like that. And also, if I have to say yeah. it a lot, it's not too long. <laughs> yeah. And then you can add some honorifics on there if you want. Like for instance, I was Bisson Rall, the truth teller. I'll because add, totally I'll add my point. nonsense after this the creation. All right. Yeah. Uh, but word, I'm sure it. I will. <laughs> Perfect. So. The next thing that you're going to need to do is uh, check both those checkboxes on the right upper right-hand corner where you have your mortal dice to jet. 
because you are alive and well currently. I do like now, that. Yes, it's it's a it's a good thing. It's a good thing to be alive for now. Eventually, it'll be an even better thing to not be. But that's that's long term goals. <laughs> um, so for now, one of the things that ab about being a faded hero is is that you are doing the bidding of something, basically a, a god, an ancestor, something with a name that is that is powerful and is is sending you out into the universe to quest mm -hmm. and do things that it wants um, it is something that does not live on the uh it might show up sometimes on the earth environment but it is not your boss for instance mm -hmm. right right it's not gonna tell it's you to do tps reports or something like that <laughs> yeah but it's 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 more of a, a mystical impetus mm -hmm. than a than a physical presence in i'm the existence. fated hero of the god of paperwork <laughs> of xeroxes and paper clips <laughs> and coffee cups <laughs> God, that guy's the worst. it is bronze age so i don't think paper is around as much um i only say that because you know we can there was a spleen last time we can get weird it's fine um so but, yeah, things are, are mostly written on uh clay or wax tablets and in uh lands to the west uh they write on papyrus for whatever that's worth fair enough so i mean yeah you you could be you could do the bidding of the um the one who writes just in general as uh as kind of like a throwback to paperwork or that kind of thing <laughs> or the uh you know something along the lines of of a uh, paper pusher or what the the bronze uh, equivalent of that would be actually i'll do Receipts and records. God. <laughs> there you go. The one, oh, there you go. The one who weaves the epics. Um, so then you, you have some questions. Um, are they the various things that are underneath that that have the check boxes? You know, are they um, yeah, if you could scroll in a little bit, are they mighty? You know, are they present in Eidolon, which basically means is there a like a statue of them or a symbol of mm -hmm. them that is physically present in the world? Um, it could be a totem. Um, it could be a temple that was raised in their name. Any, anything along those lines. Yes. Please, God, uh, if you have suggestions, now is the time to start. Um, I cannot recall. Were those feared and mighty auto-checked, or did I check them trying to open this document? At some I think point? they were just opened by accident, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think it was, it was an accident, um, but yeah. they definitely can be. Now, uh, um, I want to stress, you can check all of them as long as there's a reason for all of them to be checked. Um, you don't have to feel like you're making yourself overpowered or anything like that. Um, you also don't have to feel cool. like you need to like earn it. Like, oh, I'm going to get them to be more generous over time or something like that. Because right off the bat, you can have as many gold dice as you want. Because this is where you're going to get your, your dice of gold. All right. Um, I like feared, mighty, and known to all, I think. Okay. Yeah. And they're so, not beautiful, generous, or present? Um, I was considering present. I feel like the other two aren't necessarily always true. Okay, um, so they, it can become un untrue. So the catch with being president in, in Eidolon, so you might be carrying around something that describes it, right? You might be just mm -hmm. carrying around their epics, um, but uh, if you lose it, you lose them. That's, okay. the, that's the catch. Yeah, that's the catch, yeah. If the temple gets destroyed, that goes away, mm -hmm. you know, yep. so on and so forth. Okay, so yeah, you have that. And uh, their oracle is... Um, so this this basically is the the name dealer who can talk to the one that you do the bidding of because mm -hmm. you as a faded hero can't actually speak the language of names. Okay. This is the person who tells you what it is that you got to go out and you got to do. Um, they're probably telling the truth. They might be telling the truth. They might be lying, mm -hmm. but they're definitely telling you to do a thing. Um, so you basically just need to come up with a name for that person and then um, what they demand that you do. And this is going to be kind of the driving force behind most of your, your actions. Um, for instance, our Spleen fellow uh, last game had the uh, demand that he blasphemes the name of one of the other commenters. So he, he spent his time trying to blaspheme them as much as he possibly could. Um, 
Well, I think who demands that um you want me to give you a name for the oracle yeah that's that works yes there's uh, also a fantastic discord um channel that can just auto generate names too so, yeah yeah the discord bot's amazing yeah, um, it's super useful. that is a piece of work um uh their name is uh egash e-g-a-s-h e-g-a-s-h yep cool gosh who demands that you it could be maybe spreading specific epics because they only want particular tales to be told. Hmm. Uh, it could be stamping out bad epics. Yeah. Inspire, inspire the ep epics. Uh, oh yeah, inspire the. Oh, insinuate myself. Ah, ha, ha, ha. there you go. Nice, Fred. Yeah. So anytime someone's starting to do something, you're gonna be like, "Hey, and me too." Yep. And then, and then or, also, I was there. I was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's the big, I was there. I did that thing. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's Brecca. Brecca <laughs> and Beowulf is like, oh, I, I'm really important too. Yes. You know? yes, and the gods are also suggesting correcting it to make them look better because you were there and, you know. I may or may not have, better. have been one of the many people playing a lot of Hades recently. And <laughs> they do have the side story of Zag continuously having to be like, Orpheus, you know, I lied about that. I wasn't part of that, and Orpheus not believing him. Yeah, he's like, no. Because <laughs> he's like, you're though. a god. You don't but have you to be were, humble. Yeah. You don't have to be humble. And he's like, I was lying when I said that Diana. I said, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, my, my son plays it a lot, actually. And it's, yeah, it's a fantastic mm -hmm. game. Um, kind of ties right into this type of thing. So now um, we're going to give you a trophy or trophies if you decide you want to have multiple. Um, and basically, this is a thing. Um, we'll a only physical start with thing. One. We're gonna start with okay. You, you only start with one. one. Yep. Ah, yep. okay. I was unaware that you only get to start with one. That that yep. makes sense. Get so more. yeah, it's it's a thing that you have seized in your travels. It could be uh, the leg bone of a giant mammoth um, that it, that you carved up and made look cool. Um, it could be your enemy's helmet that you you took from them in combat. It could be something as simple as like you know a, a rival bards uh um sack that they keep all their stuff in um it can be your weapon um it doesn't have to be uh most of the time for faded heroes it probably is a weapon to start with because that's how you're gonna be you know getting shit done putting it down you know <clears throat> a bag of sentient gas yeah <laughs> so i think that it is um a quarter staff um where uh as a decorative piece along it uh are the quilled slash writing um implements that um bards who have uh started writing tales that i was involved in uh are attached to it so just like kind of collecting nice. the feathers of the quills yeah notches on the belt so to speak mm -hmm. Only feathers, which is way better. I yeah, feel like cool. everyone should start doing that now in real life. Yep, yep, yep. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. So is it old? Is it generous? Is it mighty? Is it known to all? The quarter staff has got to be mighty, right? Yeah. That's totally mighty. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's old yet. That makes okay. sense. Um, um, I'd say it's probably known to all. It's got to be known to all, right? It's stories yeah, I, by this point. I mean, if you ask me it's known to all <laughs> well uh, that's true. Yes. <laughs> ask the people around you i mean yeah. i think you will probably your your point is to make it known to all is that true yes uh so go around making it known to all fair enough uh what is what is what is everyone else cooney nino is it known to all is it generous super known to all Super known all. Generous. The quarter staff could be generous at doling out head wounds. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Generous, ge yeah. generous. Really, uh, take take it's everything here literally. It's generously decorated. Generously decorated. Generous yeah. means generous is like a cornucopia. It means it gives people things. Um, unless it's giving people things, um, it won't make any sense to you. And don't oh. worry if you want to find something generous, go go, go you know capture <laughs> and a a. a pomegranate whose seeds uh, sprout as soon as you throw them. That could be right. 
But yeah, mighty and known to all. Mighty and known to all. Okay, so yeah, so now when you roll your dice, um, you're going to have four dice of jet <laughs> and one, two, three, four dice of gold. So I am going to edit your preset. Um, okay, so four dice of jet, black and black. And then three, so one of the things that everybody else gold. is going to be doing is making sure that Danny has opportunities to steal or otherwise take uh, trophies. Um, and we'll see what, what they do with them. Um, they might not get them. You know, they might fight with them and, and lose it. Right. Or, you know, they might get broken or whatever. But So, yeah, that's, that's more or less how you do it. You're set. You're ready to go. You can go on adventures. So, um, yeah, having seen that. Who wants to be next? I'll do it. That would, you know? Oh, Cooney. Sorry, I had Cooney. the chat box in the way and I couldn't see right. who I, I was actually I, Sometimes talking. I don't know, like, how big should I make each screen, you know, et cetera. Yeah. That's so should, I should do a screen share? Yep. Okay. Yes. Right. First, I will make this smaller. And then I will be Zoom proficient share screen. Yes. And I want to do Faded Hero. Okay. Is this working? Yep. Okay. I named myself already because I thought in the email it said we could, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Ham Ham the Gub Gub. <laughs> I'm a Faded Hero. Um, All right. And then Carlos, who's played this, told me to check both my black die. Yep. Dice die. Correct. And I yep. did. Um, but I haven't done anything else yet because it sounded like more fun not to. Yes, that is in fact part of the fun. Um, okay, so you're ham ham the gub gub. Um, and uh, now we basically just had to see who you do the bidding of. Let me see, we got Shak Zur. Shah Zakur. Shah Zakur. Zakur. All right, cool. Um, someone read that as the ultimate moisturizer, so that's fun. <laughs> oh, Danny. Danny read that as the ultimate moisturizer. I love the that. Mo I love that. The ultimate. <laughs> oh, I can't You're going to run out of space fast, unfortunately, on, on this document. So we'll get a little bit of writing challenge of, of expressing it in smaller <laughs> words. <laughs> Hold on. I think if I can do it. Your moisturizer. Hold on. I can do it. I can do it, Danny. Moisturize. Mm -hmm. Ultimate moisturizer. <laughs> Just do ult moisturizer. We'll know. Ultimate moisture. <laughs> no, that's a different. Uh, <laughs> that is a different. It guy. is, in fact. That, that would be. He just has like a little water bottle and spritzes you. <laughs> <laughs> Ultra moisturizer. The ultimate moisturizer. Ultra moisturizer. Okay. Okay. Um, so they sound pretty mighty to me. I don't know what the rest of you think, but that, that sounds pretty mighty. Mighty um, and beautiful. And beautiful, yes. <laughs> Very because generous. The, the essence of beauty is is water, and the essence of water is wetness. So, and, um, yeah, moisture um, yes. with a lot of moisture. moisture. Yes, very Definitely moist. Definitely present in Eidolon. Super okay. Cool. Yeah, no to all. Sure, feared by some. But I don't want to like make fear the ultimate like. Right, you don't want to spread that as much. Mostly beautiful and mighty and generous, known to all and present. Yeah, we'll keep the but, fear away. So how are they present in Adelon? Just just so that we have that clarified. How does um, everyone want? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, so people uh, keep little household gods and um, little altars maybe mm -hmm. in their houses and they always have a little like uh, like a little dab bowl of of um like lard sometimes it's lard sometimes it's oil any kind of sometimes it's water if they're very poor or don't have access to other things you know sometimes if they're witches it's a the damn cloth innocent babies but it's yeah. some, like it's sometimes yeah it's just always present on the household altar and wherever that dedicated moisturizer is so too is shock zagur Right. Okay. And so the more the more moisturizing agents you can get on more altars, the, the longer they stay present in Eidolon. So that'll be a thing that you want to make sure everyone remembers to moisturize. Right. Um, and if you, like cover yourself in moisturizer, the god is like can ride you, you know. Oh, okay. A way to enter into you. Perfect. I love it. 
All right. So, um, who is their oracle? Do we do we want to generate a name, or do you have a, a name teed up? I mean, like Zoe. Okay. I yeah. can do more. Hold on, Zoe. <laughs> Zoastra. Yeah. Oh no, because no. um, I'm doing um, Mumzo, 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 Mini. 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 All right. And they demand that you. And so the Oracle's demanding I do something for their God, for the God of Moisturizer. Well, they're letting you know what it is that the one that you're doing the bidding of specifically wants you to do. So they're not their God, technically, they're yours. But okay. you asked them what do they want. And they so said. I'm like, what do I want? And they want, demand that I. Um. Milk the giant frog of Nash. Perfect. So now we're going to have to find the giant frog of Nash for sure. That's a thing. Or um, moisturizing agents. A new form of moisturizing. Yep. Perfect. All right. So then, yeah. What kind of uh, trophies have, or what's the, the first trophy that you've, you've seized so far? seized a um uh the leather purse of of uh poom the leather purse of poom poom and poom 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 and or pum depends pum, on pum, the pum, colloquial, pum. local colloquialism how you pronounce it um yeah. uh never ending food but it's all slime. I mean, like, it all tastes like slime. So never-ending gruel, basically. Never-ending <laughs> gruel. That's better because that's, you know, less words. Never-ending gruel. There. And that's what's visible. Um, so it sounds generous, yep. for sure. I and mean, very old, like, legendary. Oh, God, mm -hmm. old so If it's gruel. legendary, then it's known to all. And okay. known to all, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's mighty so much it's like a little purse of growth no. it certainly can keep you well fed yeah that's not the same as mighty yeah 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 okay so five jet dice then and one two three i'm just changing up your preset that i've got um i just i keep picturing bobby hill and you just being like fighting this little guy and him being like that's my purse i don't know you and then you're just taking it and running <laughs> just to, uh, just note everyone uh we were going to be coming up on a break soon but i want to get through everybody's character creation so we're going to get that done first okay. uh and uh second once you have your name uh decided it's helpful for the other players if you change your zoom name to your character's name yep and so i've got your preset saved now so you have five gold and five jet. All right, so let's sure. uh, move on to Nino. Okay, uh, this is a tough choice between being a name dealer and a faded hero because I feel like three faded heroes is just sort of like you're gonna very, mess some very... stuff up. Yeah, oh, and, <laughs> you know, and I wanted to be. I kind of want to mess stuff up though, so I think I will also be a faded hero. Um, sure. Because I like that. Uh, Last game, there were three see. name dealers, so it's all oh, good. Oh, okay, so it's balanced now. Okay, let me show you. Well, the Splane no, 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 no. uh, uh, was a faded hero. Yeah, yeah Splane was, was a definitely faded a faded hero. hero. Yeah. You could Josh and I were it, it, name dealers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah any, okay. any, anyone who's um spending that much time making everybody else do the work is definitely a faded hero. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, what are you? What are you called? Everyone, keep uh, in mind this is what you're going to be shouting right before you go do something. Um, the the two syllables that stood out to me were "dulem." Okay. Dulem. Dulem. Cool. Mm -hmm. And any honorifics, or are we going to wait and see? I will wait and see All what right. kind of a what kind of a hero Dulem is. Does, does the chat does the chat have any? Do the gods have any idea of honorifics? Are we going to force something on them? <laughs> no? Okay. Nothing yet. Okay. So let's move on. So you got your jet dice need to be checked over there just to make sure okay. that we don't forget. Uh, let me just minimize this. So you don't 
die in character creation. Okay. Um, <laughs> and so who are you doing the bidding of? Um, hmm. The holy seed of. How, how intimate of a relationship can I have with, with this god? Well, then I not speak to it. I yeah. can't speak yeah, to it? Yeah, you can't, you can't have one-on-one -on -one conversations. That's okay. why you have an oracle that tells you what they want. Um, so. Okay. Can it be physically intimate? I mean, <laughs> if it's present in Edelon and you make something you could be with, yeah. then yeah, I don't see why uh -huh. you wouldn't be able to. Totally. Uh, let me pull up what are some... What are some ooh. Do the bidding of Body Pillow the Great. Or something. Oh like no! <laughs> <laughs> the ritual object. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Hope is right. The, in general, the um, the great names communicate through catastrophe. Right. Uh, I'm just trying to like find some syllables that also speak to me, and I feel like I should have been doing this, but I was so having so much fun listening. Oh, no, that's people. perfect. That's um, exactly how it's supposed to go down. Uh. You know what, I'm just going to choose the last two on there. Uh, Yogzesh? Yogzesh. Yogzesh. Ah. Hmm. And uh, Yogzesh, the god of, if there are suggestions in the chat, I would love to see them. They're not god. necessarily a god of something. They're your ancestor. That they're just oh, they be your ancestor, too. Yeah. I love that, actually. Um, I will definitely uh, go away, chat. Go away. How do I make it go away? There we go. Um, Yogzesh. They don't mean it. They don't mean it. Uh, Yogzesh, the... the if, ever you, if you're having... Um, I almost called you students. I've been in front of my class all day. Uh, <laughs> um, if you... I think if you get out of full screen uh, on Zoom, mm -hmm. then when you hit the chat, it'll come up in a panel on the right side. Yeah, no, I, I figured it out. It's, okay. it's okay. But yeah, so Yogzesh, the, the, the uncle. Actually, no, you know what? The drunken uncle? or No. <laughs> Yogzesh, the auntie, the meddling auntie. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. The fun auntie. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Occasionally. The fun. When she wants to be. I, I feel like this is going to be a little bit like a bunch of glow characters. Mm. <laughs> 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 I it's love that. It's kind of started that way. Okay, yeah, she's definitely fierce. She's definitely mighty, as are all aunties. I don't think Yogzesh is known to all. Um, uh, would she admit to being beautiful? She's definitely beautiful. Uh, is actually she, she is she beautiful to you? Is the question. Um, I think in the way of you know the way that like your family and like the faces that are most beloved to you are beautiful. Yes, she is okay. beautiful. Yeah, um, perfect. And, uh, hmm. She's a meddling auntie, so she has a lot of love to give. Um, <laughs> whether you want it or not is is definitely a question. But I think she is she is generous in her love. Um, but no, she's not known to all. And so I'm sorry. What does present in Adelon mean? It means there's some kind of uh, a statue, or in the case of of Ham Ham, there's like a whole bunch of. Um, little bits and pieces of them spread throughout that remind everyone of their presence and make sure that everyone knows that they exist. Um, okay. It could be a temple. Uh, it could be a little totem that you carry, but they're physically in the world in that way. I think, yeah, in that case, um, Yagzes the auntie would not, would not leave this, this planet without leaving something physical behind. It was it. What is, is it? Her, it? Is it her fruit pastries that aren't <laughs> as good as they think that they are? Oh, um, no, I think it's actually a really ugly hand knit sweater. Hat. Oh, a hat. <laughs> that's a literally, that's the literally the, the, the audience. That's suggested. literally <laughs> what the guys were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> terrible oh, hat. Oh, I had closed the chat, but there we go. Yeah. It is a terrible hat. The that terrible left hat. and that I have to wear no matter how warm it is. Yeah, but also her pastries just weren't as good as she thought that they were. So <laughs> too heavy. Oh, they were. Oh, so what is your what's your oracle name, and uh, what are they? What is what does Auntie desire or demand that you do? I feel like uh, their I feel like Yogzesh's oracle is probably her grandchild. Um, 
who we're just gonna we're just gonna call them Vinny. <laughs> um, there, uh, there is no V. There's the no closest V. We're gonna get to There's Vinny no v. is um, we can do. Let's see what else we can. Uh, Beanier, B I N A R. That gets pretty close to Vinny. B I N I R. B I N U. I kind of like B I N U. Yeah. Binier. Binu. 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 Yeah, Binu, Binu. works. Yeah. And they demand what? <laughs> oh, um, Ziz or Ziz? You could do Ziz or ZZ? ZZ. What are we? Do? No, it's Binu. Um, no, nope, um, it's Binu. Yeah, it's, I'm sticking with Binu. Um, yeah, cousin Binu demands that I um... find a way to get rid of that hat. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think I think Vin, I think Binu would probably like demand that I continue wearing the hat. Um, I think that uh, what Yogzesh, the auntie, probably wants is oh, capture legendary cattle. Uh, I was gonna say like. More grandchildren. <laughs> yeah, good. Pursue yeah. your passion for another is one of the things yep, that favorite yep. heroes do. Then, so. yeah, uh, who demands that I pursue my my passion? Um, in quotes, because it's probably I don't think it's my passion. Um, who demands that I pursue <laughs> my passion and uh, grow her legacy? And make them all wear hats too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is this ugly hat like? Um, I imagine that it's like it's it's uh, crocheted. It's sort of like kind of, it's it's kind of back far on Dulim's head. Um, uh -huh. It comes down very very far, um, kind of like halfway down their back. Uh, uh, it smells gross. <laughs> Got to smell perfect. <laughs> you know, because like you can't you get like you can't take it off and you can't really it, wash it. Is it made out um, of goat fur? Um, let's say yes. It has flaps. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So Yazish so, really kind of screwed me on this, like you know, trying to hook up with other people. That's Nobody good, wants to know if you're question. allowed to wash yeah. it. Are you allowed to? Is this, is this like a bathing kind of thing where you have to wash it and you at the same time? Uh, I say, yeah, I think that's yes, that's what it is. Should I put this under my trophies? Yeah, I think it sounds like it that's could a be your trophy. Yeah, yep, that yeah. could be your trophy. Okay, so the that's ugly kind hat. Of the ugly hat. Um, <laughs> can I just call it the ugly hat? Yeah. Of the holiday present. Yogzesh, yeah. Uh, the holiday <laughs> yeah. present. Yogzesh's yeah. ugly hat. Uh, Yogzesh's of Yogzesh. There we go. Um, it it's is definitely old. old. Yeah, it's uh -huh. definitely old. Super old. Um, the smell is mighty. Um, <laughs> yep. Yep. Legit. Uh, I don't think well, that would be really funny if it was actually known to all. <laughs> this is legendarily bad wow. hat. <laughs> once you've once you've smelled it, and you just you got to tell someone else about that hat you smelled, and then the the word just spreads like wildfire. All right, all right, yeah, okay. So uh, it is old, mighty, and the stench precedes it um, yeah. Yeah. into any room. I don't. I wouldn't say it's generous. I think it's actually very jealous and just only wants you. Yeah. Huh. This, but yeah, it's a it's a really it's a it's a catch twenty two. Um, Yogzesh wanting some more grandkids, the hat not really wanting me to, you know, invest my time in other people. <laughs> All right. So you got five golds and five jet. Okay. okay. Cool. I will stop sharing that. Three. And then I think this is time for the break. Okay. Very cool. So if you want to take a quick break to get up and go get a drink, uh, get a second drink uh, or a third drink or go to the bathroom, what have you, uh, great. And come back in about two to three minutes and we'll be ready to go. See you in two to three minutes. Bye. Hope told us. <laughs> okay. So I think uh, we're ready to go. Uh, before we start playing, uh, I'm going to share a screen. And I'm going to share this book cover. Uh, yes, should be there. I'm going to share from current slide. And so, yeah, so we're going to take uh, 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 regular breaks. And we do, we're going to share uh, a, a book cover and let the author kind of kind of tell about themselves. This is this is Defect uh, from Nino Cipri. Do you want to tell us more about, about your story and your book? Yeah, so Defect is the second book in, uh, it's a sequel to my first novella, Finna, uh, which I think you also have a little slide of. Um, 
so both defects and finna take place in a uh, analog of Ikea. It's, it, it can't be Ikea for, you know, liability reasons. Um, but <laughs> it is very much a large Swedish furniture big box store. Um, and in Defect, uh, Defect follows Derek, who is a very special employee uh, at what's called Littenwald. Um, he very much believes in the company motto that there is a place for everyone and a place for everything. Um, and even though, you know, Littenwald doesn't really like pay him very well and he lives in a like you know, retrofitted cargo container in their back parking lot. Uh, he really, really wants to do well. Um, after a couple of sort of like upsetting things happened, uh, he's called into a really unnerving meeting with his manager and told to do a special overnight inventory, um, which he's more than happy to do. But when he arrives, a couple of strange things happen. Uh, some furniture starts chasing him around. He encounters a whole bunch of himself, who are apparently the uh, the inventory team, and a lot of different <laughs> things happen from there. Uh, so yeah, defect. Uh, I think like the the silly tagline that my editor came up with is "Are five Derricks better than one?" Uh, which is a question that we all have to ponder. Uh, so that's going to be out. Uh, it's going to be out on April twentieth. Um, I remember that because a lot of my friends laughed about it. Uh, so well four done. twenty one. <clears throat> I Very thought it was fitting. Very <laughs> cool. For some reason, I, I just I imagine this book as a, as an anime. <laughs> you know, I think I, well, like when I was now. trying, to, I oh, please. Uh, I remember when I was writing it. Um, I definitely came up like with what the kind of like opening sequence would be, um, and like what the song would be if it was. But of course, I've forgotten since then. So, <laughs> oh, you have plenty of time to and uh, to drink enough wine, whatever that is, to get up the juice to hum it or figure it out by the time we're done. Uh, okay, so uh, we will continue. We will go back to the game. Next break we take, we will look at another uh, of our, our guests' uh, art or books uh, that is, that's out there. All right, uh, take it away, toys. Taking it away. Okay, so now everyone exists. Everyone knows more or less who they are or has a really good idea who they are. Um, so at this point, it's time to enter into the world more or less. Um, so you're all obviously already in the world somewhere. So at this point now we have to ask three questions, uh, four questions, sorry. Uh, what do you look like? Where are you? What are you doing? And who's with you? Um, so if any of you, if any of those four questions immediately sets off a, ooh, 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 I know the answer to that right now. Let me know and we'll start with you. Usually it should be a, a player who asks that of another player. I should maybe write the four questions down. Yeah, I, I lost track of them. I'm sorry. Immediately forgot them. Um, Perfect. I'll write it down in the chat. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Ham Ham. <laughs> what do you look like? Where are you? What are you doing? Who's with you? I don't know why I capitalized with. Mm. Apparently, <laughs> apparently with is a big deal now. It's not just any with. Yeah, it's with. Who are you with? So I, in this, like, if, if I wanted to be with my fellow players and I said that, but they didn't want to be with me, there could be a conflict or is this a yes and kind of thing? Uh, the, the, you can invite them in and they can join you if they want to. So it sounds like you're going for it, Ham Ham. So Ham Ham, you're you're with the others, is what you're I'm, saying. I would like to be with Dulim and also with Dak Kal, please. I would like to be with them okay. and on an adventure. Any any objections to that at all? Uh, none. Everyone seems cool with that. All right. Should um, we, so since you're the one that had like since Ham Ham had the really specific place that they had to go to? Should we be near the, near Nash? Near the giant frog? Well, do you want to solve that quick or do you want to solve that slow is the real question. Is that a long-term goal or a short-term goal? That could be a long-term goal. Um, it could be, it could be that we're near Nash, but 
also that the giant frog is also difficult to reach. Like we could be at the crossroads okay. right before the swamp where the giant frog lives, but the swamp is practically impassable. And uh, yeah, so we and could so be- it is. And so it is. Um, no, that's that's literally how this is going to work. So answer the questions and describe as much as you as you feel you need to describe, and that's how this will go. Okay. What do I look like? Well, I'm a gub gub, so I'm a bit squat and uh, squarish, but 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 and green mostly. I can have I have a, a degree of protective coloration camouflage <laughs> that increases the more scared I get perhaps. Um, uh, so that's what I look like. Where am I? We're at the crossroads before the swamp where the giant frog lives. Uh, who's with me? My fellow heroes, Duck, Call, and Lim. And what am I doing? I am currently, um, so the reason I have this purse of poom, this leather purse of poom, well, it's good for the never-ending source of gruel in case I get hungry, but it's also good because the gruel is a natural moisturizer so that I always carry my god with me. I don't have to like go looking for babies to render down for their fat or, you know, olive trees or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I have uh, currently I'm upending my purse of gruel over my head until it's just I'm just covered with it and I'm sort of reveling and being close to the iteration of my God and and praying deeply and making unseemly noises. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. And uh, so let's see. So uh, that so once you have that answer, unless somebody has something that they want to throw in, you can ask the other players about them those same four questions. Uh, well, uh, Doc Call, what do you look like? You're on mute. Doc Call is very tall, um, broad, probably bears, I swear, no resemblance to Roman Reigns, but it's just Roman Reigns because that's who I play. Um... Uh, armor is uh, actually not as heavily armored as you would think uh, on first uh, view of like a hero, but it's actually because uh, with the quarterstaff and everything, uh, he's set up to move faster rather than like uh, like like brute blunt force. Um, uh, that said, um, there he still got the like um, like a big solid... old shoulder plate or something. Yeah, <laughs> um, which uh, has a very uh, while he's been adventuring for a while, so it's a little messy right now. If you were to clean it up, you would see that it's uh, got an ornate carving on it depicting uh, one of his favorite scenes from an epic from before he started adventuring. Um, Very yeah. cool. So what, what are you doing? doing? Yeah. Uh, tsh- I am currently backing away from a never-ending pile of gruel that's <laughs> spreading all <laughs> over. <laughs> um, which piece of the landscape was, was like uncrossable? Uh, the bog. So we're at the crossroads that kind of end at this interminable swamp. Um, so Doc Call is surveying the land looking for uh, not fully rotted out, rotted out trees, uh, like big pieces uh, of um, trunk to try to, you know, uh, fashion together something that they can cross the bog with. Fair enough. Um, uh, and with that, uh, I suppose I would move to uh, ask Dulim, uh, what do you look like? Uh, I imagine Dulim looks kind of like a mountain, um, just sort of like very big, one of those like no neck dudes um, who is just like a very, very broad and like his head just looks 
kind of tiny compared to the rest of him. Um, and so he's kind of like very big, very heavy set. Um, and aside from the hat, which has already been discussed and described, um, I imagine that he's wearing, um, I feel like uh, the the Yagzesh people are probably, um, I feel like they're mountain people. So he's probably wearing a lot of like um, uh, clothing that is made from like woven uh, plant fibers, um, which uh, probably are very dusty, pretty dirty, uh, if we have journeyed all the way to Nash. Um, and I imagine that uh, ya uh, Dulim is also, I think, a brawler. Um, they they can the use weapons. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have that stuck in my head for the rest of the night. That's good. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Technically, uh, that's not your fault. I know, but I feel like it comes back to me. Just reflects on me. Um, it's collaborative yeah. storytelling, so it's all exactly. of our faults. It's everyone's fault. Yeah. We all share equally in, in that. Um, where was I going with that? But yeah, so they're pretty scarred up. Um, big, big ham fists and like big scars. And I think they probably have like, um, because they like hitting things with their fists, uh, they probably have just sort of like armored up, uh, like, I don't know what they're called except brass, brass knuckles. It's the Browns age. So they've got <laughs> bronze knuckles, I guess in that case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just big old hunks of bronze strapped to your hands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They they eventually took on the shape of knuckles just from you hitting things so hard with them <laughs> that the only shape that they could form into was your knuckles. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah basically, imagine Andre the Giant and uh, uh, Princess Bride, but with the hat. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. You are the brute squad. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously you three are the brute squad yeah. <laughs> so perfect all right so yes currently we've got praying uh we've got looking for a bridge what are you doing um actually that's another question so do to my to uh doc hall and ham ham uh do we think my oracle would have come along with us because i imagine that i would be conferring with with benu in that maybe case. maybe you carry your oracle around on your back like yeah. <laughs> like Yoda. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Uh, they cling to your dirty hat and just smell the god. <laughs> That's so gross. I love that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah, uh, in that case, I am conferring with Binu. Um, uh, trying to figure out because I feel like Yog Yazgesh. Yogzesh uh, probably has a lot of advice at all times. So I'm conferring with Benu to see uh, what advice she has for us uh, while we're about to depart. Okay. So then at this point, um, it would be up to either uh, Ham Ham or Doc Call to let you know what it is that uh, Benu is telling you. Uh, since you're interacting with essentially what would be considered an NPC, it's then their job to let you know how that goes down. All right, uh, Doc Hall, would you mind telling me what Vinu is telling me uh, Yagzesh the auntie says? Um, so the first, guys? so sandwiched between complaints about how wrinkled your clothes are and wondering <laughs> whether you've been eating enough, uh, points out that you'll be able to get to a place with food and extra clothing if you find the purple flower um, and place it upon uh, the floating rot to make a bridge. Place the purple flower on the floating rot to make a bridge. Mm hmm and are they typically uh, cryptic like this, do you think? Like they usually give like advice that could mean a lot of different things or I, I feel like it was all very straightforward stated, but like you what does often happen is that uh, the thing you're asking for, you basically do have to put up with the phone call with the auntie to get it. <laughs> uh, so like what you like 
it was thrown out like, oh yeah, of course. Like, well, of course. It's like I've told you before. They've never told you before. Uh, you know, like uh, if you find the pur purple flower uh, and the pile of rot, you know, like there'll be the bridge. And when you're there, you know, like maybe you can finally, you know, like get some meat on your bones and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> How did you nail her voice so perfectly? <laughs> <laughs> um, so this this is actually uh, an aspect of the game that that Josh had explained last time we played is that if somebody seems to have a connection to one of either the named beings or what, your oracle or any of the things that you interact with on a regular basis, it's it's a good idea to have them continue to be that person going forward, just so that you get a good flavor for who they are, and then that kind of continues and becomes consistent. So, uh, sorry, Danny, you are uh, Binu forever now. Um, <laughs> unless you don't want to be. It's, oh, it's, it's, all, cool. it's all up to people, of course. <laughs> but um, that, that is another aspect of things. So if somebody starts taking on the voice of one of the other people's oracles or one of the uh, great names that they deal with on a regular basis, that kind of becomes not like an alternate character, but like your voice in a way. Um, so at this point... Um, I don't know if anybody's really coercing anything or following their passion for another um, yet. And it doesn't sound like there's any followers around to be leading, um, but it sounds like you might need to test yourself to get said piece of wood from the swamp. Um, I don't know, like, if the, the praying in any particular way is arduous like is this like is there a danger of you drowning yourself like are you just like standing there mouth open like, like i might <laughs> i might not be able to breathe through this gruel or is it just like you get done with it and you just kind of like scrape as much as you want back into your purse you know like i can finally see i eat a little you know to get my strength up um I, uh, I I feel clear, like, I I just try to swim in that bog until I found the Frog of Nash, but it seems to me that uh, Dulim may have a better idea through the Auntie God. Um, so, 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 so my goal is to find that frog and to milk it, and I have to prove myself. Um, so I start sh shucking all of my, uh, my accoutrements, my backpack, my... I keep the leather bag of gruel around my neck. I don't want to get rid of that uh, attribute because, you know, in a pinch, one could throw gruel at people, I suppose, if you, if you need to. Um, so I, um, gub gubs are really good at swamps and water. And I'm, I'm just, I'm contemplating throwing myself in. I'm full of religious fervor right now. Okay, so you're just kind Hold of me back. Hold me back! No, don't do it, guys. <laughs> so does any? Yeah, does anyone feel as though this is a thing that they're testing themselves for, or um? Well, we've already established that, that, that the the swamp is impassable, right? And to test yourself, you do things that people wouldn't think that a mortal could do. So definitely, yeah, yeah. I'd now, like to throw myself into the swamp and test my 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 gub gub strength against the the marshy bracken. Right. So we've got a, a test to just use your gub gubness to get through. We've potentially got a test to find the the bridge and a test to find the purple flower to place on the rot to make a bridge. Oh, we got a question. Can you explain what you mean and why that matters and to keep your possible actions in mind? Um, I think we're doing that. Yeah. I think we're explaining that as we're going. I think um, it was in terms of what those different kinds of roles meant. Ah, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. So as a faded hero, there are there are four circumstances under which you get to roll dice. So if you try to do things that are not in those four circumstances, the fellow storytellers that you're with, and in this case, the gods in the chat, get to basically just tell you how that goes down. So as a faded hero, if you try to thieve something, um, everyone gets to just narratively decide how that happens. If you try to coerce somebody into doing something, follow your passion for another, test yourself against something, or lead your followers, you get to roll your dice, and then when you get strikes, pick from the list of the results that you can get to kind of drive the, the story mm -hmm. forward. Um, now, I do actually have a question for Josh. Since we've potentially got three tests that are all interconnected mm -hmm. going at the same time, is this something that everyone can roll and then we 
collectively come up with a well, everybody is just doing a thing. What we what we care about is the specific action that they're doing. So somebody's trying to swim across, right? Well, uh, does Doolim share what the Oracle said or no? Because that would affect what That's Dot Call is doing. Very good question. I, I, I think that Doolim definitely would. They would never hear the end of it if they, tried to get that <laughs> they didn't pass on the wisdom, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so just you roll the dice for the specific thing you're doing. Um, so this is the the outcome that that happens to you. So if you're you're, you're taking a, a taking action, you can take each other as followers. You might chafe by it, mm -hmm. um, but you can take each other. Um, uh, you don't have to ask permission. Um, mm -hmm. You take things from the world. That's what it is to be a hero. Um, so. Um, uh, so do the thing that you're doing. Nobody else needs to okay it. What you need to do is describe your thing. And if people are like, oh, that's a, that you're testing yourself, you roll your dice. And you want to do that. You want to roll your dice often. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, well, yeah, I guess we'll start with, with Ham Ham. We'll, go, we'll move on to Doc Call, who has been given the wisdom of Doolim. And if Doolim then wants to test themselves you know, as well, they mm -hmm. can test themselves after that. Um, does that sound good? Yeah. All right, cool. So I'm going to share my screen. Share it, Liam! Share the screen! <laughs> do it. Do it now. <laughs> Oop. Okay, so first we're doing hom homs. Let's see. see. So these are your dice. That's just me teeing them up. Okay. So now we're going to roll your roll dice. Em. Okay. So it looks like you've got two strikes. One on jet and one on gold. Okay. So I think that's actually pretty good for you um, huh. because you didn't get any more gold than on dice of jet. Because if you roll more strikes on your gold dice than on your jet dice, you're now vulnerable to a demand of your great name. It's the that other way makes... around. But in this case, it's a tie. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, yep. But in this case, it was a tie. So mm -hmm. things just go down. Yep. So you have two strikes which means you get to pick two out of um, the following. So I guess I'll share my other screen now. So unless you want to share your screen with your character sheet, because we can then scroll down and just... Uh, I'm looking at it now. I can share it if you want me to. Okay, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and share? Um, so you're kind of running that show. Okay. So here I am. Uh, yeah. And so then... you're going to scroll down a little more. Go do it under the next page, yeah. Yep. There right there. So we're, we're doing test yourself. Yes. So you get to pick two out of those four. Okay. Um, I've seized my destiny and take followers as a trophy from among the witnesses. And uh, are the witnesses my two companions mm -hmm. here? And oh. oh, yeah, and Benu, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I've 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 decided to jump into the swamp, and on my way in, I reach uh, um, into sorry, Doom Doolim's backpack or wherever uh, Binu is crouching, and I snatch the Oracle Binu, and I <gasps> I uh, like kind of clamp their the nape of the neck between my teeth, and I like <laughs> dive into the swamp, and I like dog paddle, and I and I and I uh, make the glug 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 glug. Like noise that will attract the great frog to me, and from the distance I hear the bellow, go, 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 go. <laughs> and I know that if I go in that direction, I will, um, I will make it to the great frog and and fulfill the duties my God has laid upon me. Now, um, one thing I want to ask before we we keep going is, do you shout your name before you do that? Because if you do. If you have shouted your name and pressing all with your splendor, you seize one destiny for each four you have rolled. And you did, in fact, roll two fours. Oh, two. So Great. you would seize two destiny for doing this. So this, if I did this, it would sound like this. And so I think I do it. I have the oracle on my teeth. Like, <laughs> so I shout my name, <laughs> though it is not quite. People don't understand it if they were listening. I think the oracle intuits that I say it. <laughs> The vibrations <laughs> through their arm is it's very clear, yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, you uh, can actually mark two destiny on your character sheet. So you you seized the destiny. 
Gotcha. And uh, do you want succeed in this trial? Neither Can harmed I... or shamed, or no other is harmed. Oh, Can I... I super, super succeed? Oh, wait. Yeah, you can say something. Well, I was also going to say, do I have to let this happen? Uh, no. I mean, no, yeah, you yeah, could yeah, try to contest yeah. it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I would absolutely contest my oracle being stolen off of my back and then taken into the water. Yeah, yep. All right. Um, now, is it, the Binu might might become become Ham Ham's follower nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Um, that that is the case. Um, they are impressed, apparently. Yes, and they essentially become one of your trophies, yep. and we get to decide, you know, what jet dice that they give you. Now, that doesn't mean that, um, you know, you lose them as your oracle or something like that. They still are, but mm-hmm. um, Ham Ham gets to include them as a trophy, is what happens in that case. Um, so do carry him. We're gonna see there's your dice and rolling. Uh, <laughs> that is, like, that is a weird thing about oh, this, this is program. A mess. Uh-huh. There you go. Yeah. Wait, that was yeah. totally three hits. Okay, it was three hits. We'll go with that one. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> this thing is crazy. Um, okay. So this is the first contested role I've seen so far. So Josh, how does this go down then? Yeah. So what's going on right now is that um, uh, we are, the, uh, are these Nino's dice? Are these Doolin's dice that we're just looking at right now? Uh, yeah. These are Doolin's. Yes. Okay. So we are subtracting these strikes from Ham Ham's, which t- two, so it came out to zero or fewer. That means, in fact, in attempting to test themselves, um, uh, they went and grabbed uh, Binu off your back, and you were like, wait a minute. So Ham Ham now has zero strikes, and that means you can tell them what to do, and if they don't do it, you can hurt them. Here's the nice thing about that. You see your two mortal dice of jet? Mm-hmm. When you lose one, you are half dead. If you lose both, you depart from the waters of the underworld. So that's one way to harm somebody is by uh, by hurting their body directly. And you'll notice that you are unharmed. You are neither harmed nor shamed. You guys are all subject to shame. You have mm-hmm. your heroes, so you're sort of fragile egos. Um, ah! uh, uh, so all of a sudden, you have to choose that one if you don't want to die. You can also take away anything else that somebody might value. So um, uh, Ham Ham, what is your your um, your treasure oh it's it's your your, your yeah the, the yeah, you, 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 rule. Rule. yeah yeah so uh you could for instance steal that um uh but you can just tell them to do something tell him him to do something if they don't do it you can harm them um uh i would probably say what would it what would Doolim do um i think Doolim would probably I don't want to. Mm. I think Dylan would probably just whap them on their little froggy head, like just a, a a solid bonk on the top of the head of like, do not take the oracle. <laughs> that's that's shame, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So you lose a mortal die of jet, Ham Ham. Oh. <laughs> Faded heroes do not shame lightly. No, <laughs> they yep. shame hard. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you can literally get shamed to death. You have to run around taking good care of your name now. Before we write too many things down, again, uh, <laughs> Dakal, you are seeing Ham Ham grabbing Binu and then potentially getting bopped on the head like little bunny Fufu. Is there something that maybe you want to do about all of that going down? Going to be real, um, Dakal immediately seized on, on Doolim's, uh, like prophetic moment and immediately... Uh, started talking about how, quote, um, as, mind you, this is not the title I put on his sheet at all, uh, but he goes, uh, as to, as to call um, one of the best known trackers in all the 70 billion realms, I, I will lead the search for the purple flower. Okay. So yeah, they're just kind of tussling or, next no, to you. No, for the rot, because oh, it the was rot. because it was uh, Doolim's oracle. So even Dakal would not take the flower from Doolim's charge. 
I don't have to lead the story. I just have to insinuate myself. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. You was definitely, and then I was there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and I found I found the rotted wood. So there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in a swamp. So exciting. It's a special <laughs> rotted. Wood. Nasty ass swamp. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> so okay, so you do nothing to stop the the, the rough housing, I guess. So yes, you will mm. in fact lose the dice of of Jet. Sorry, Ham Ham. Um, you are okay. half dead. It's your fun. your squat head is now pushed a little further into your shoulders. Um, <laughs> and uh, I want I want to say something here. There's no, I I think there's not a good reason to take it, but should that have not been contested by Doolim, and you'd rolled that, you would have gotten those two strikes. Uh, those other two remaining ones, those can be subverted. So you were neither harmed nor shamed. Could have turned into you're harmed or shamed. And no other is harmed. Could have turned into somebody else's harm. So right. if you uh, you you um, uh, you want to make sure that those uh, roles are for things that it's worth, if not you risking your life over, at least worth risking somebody else's life over. Yep, important things. <laughs> okay. So um, so yeah, ham ham. I guess we're back to uh, what are you doing and all that. But first, I think we need to, to test the call, finding the uh, the rot. Yeah. Yes. Um. One second. So. So I will share my screen. Oh, I don't. It's already shared. I will go to Danny. These are your dice. <laughs> what? These dice yeah. are so really good. physics to find. There we go. Uh-huh. Oh, you got a strike. A strike. Good. Um, so the the swamp itself is is probably um, probably has some some feelings about that this. So somebody can be thinking about why the swamp wants to be impassable and why it's resisting the uh, the rotting the the rot being found or the rot itself why it's resisting being found. Hmm. So uh, Doc Call, choose one from the uh, test yourself list. Yep. Um. Which were seize a destiny and take a follower, succeed in this trial, don't get harmed or shamed, and no other is harmed. Um. So, as a definition of a follower, I don't have to take it from someone else, right? It can, if I can. If there's any, any from anybody who's here, you guys just cast yourself in a in a in a scene with no people in it. Oh no! I mean, I I can still come up with a follower without people that's why i was asking <laughs> huh. oh yeah like a frog saw it and was like uh that's the actually shit right there yeah uh <laughs> so dot call um while telling mostly himself uh but also the uh swamp around him um uh, about how the swamp and all those who read of this journey will remember him and etc uh finds notices uh a strange glint uh, um uh in just you know the gunk of the of the swamp um because it's like a a lightly colored pearlescent snake curling around kind of like continuously in a circle around uh, a very impressive uh pile of rotted wood but it seems as if like it's more like it's rotted into itself rather than like is dissipating mm. um, lapsing it on itself yeah. basically yeah um and he uh takes uh when he reaches down uh the snake curls up his arm and he says uh that i to call um uh, will name this snake uh, the Pearl of the Swamp and then shouts to the others, I, I think I found half of the prophecy stuff. Okay, so you seize one destiny and take followers as a trophy from among, among the witnesses. So you can checkbox a destiny mm-hmm. uh, space on your sheet. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can also figure out your new trophy because you now have a new trophy. Um, who happens to be a follower. 
But we also get to toss out to everybody else here, uh, Ham Ham Dulim and the gods. Um, among the other three, uh, you don't succeed, you are harmed or shamed, or someone is someone else is harmed. Which one of those, if any, do we want to have happen? So as of, as of right now, I am the only god, and this god is distracted right now. Fair enough. So players. So players, this, <laughs> this goes to you to decide um, how the, the consequences of her acting. She made a choice and she chose something, but you now have ways to move this story forward uh, with the choices that she did not make. Yes. Now yours to take. He he has claimed a follower and he has he's got some destiny, but at a cost, potentially. Um that that they're either harmed or shamed or they, they don't succeed. Those are the three costs. Yeah, or someone else is harmed. Yes. Oh well, it is your or, editorial right. decision if you want to do that too. Mm. Right. It's not necessary, but it could be fun. <laughs> it usually is. <laughs> Um, uh, I wouldn't mind if, if, if Ham Ham was harmed in the taking of the snake, since I'm already partly harmed, like maybe something terrible happened. And that will make you dead. That would that, kill you. That would be kind of funny. Can I have an epic? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could, I could just, uh, Bino could get harmed. Like, I was going to say, Bino could get harmed. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, Dulim has been, ha has had their aunt's, you know, voice secondhand in their head uh, for years at this point, telling them, like, you got to find somebody. You got to really, like, find someone out there who just, like, you know, is really cool and really impressive. You know, they're out there. And so I wonder what that would translate to if, if Dulim had a little bit of a, like, <gasps> moment with that ah, would that so translate to harm and shame oh. so that call pulls this this awesome snake out of nowhere and like starts shouting <laughs> stuff and you're like wow that's oh the one God. aunt he was talking about and then maybe <laughs> maybe Dulim rushes over but trips or something oh, like that and that it's like so, yeah that's something that would happen <laughs> oh, adorable like trips and falls into the spatters of the never ending gruel. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so some, some gods find that attractive. So um, I guess. <laughs> it's just like such, yeah, sh deep, deep shame. <laughs> Especially that Ham Ham said, like, oh, that. It's okay. Dakal doesn't notice much that isn't Dakal. So merely just helps you up, just like <laughs> has no literally completely over like the call's head, uh, like your entire reaction, and it's just like silly. There's there's snakes here as he shows you uh, the pearl of the swamp. You gotta be careful. <laughs> Could I ask? <laughs> and like head? attempts to like brush you off, but like it's oh. it's a little. Oh, well, also oh. like it just ends up almost being like a frat boy slap instead because he's just <laughs> not really registering you know sense mm -hmm. and you're and you're huge and beefy so everything yeah. turns into like a shove mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, I, I had a quick question and that was i think it's becoming clear it's it's not the snake that Doolin was suddenly attracted to it was duck call muscularly lifting the snake from this moist swamp yeah. Yes. A combination so of moist. The two. Yes. So yeah. such such moisture. Yes. <laughs> All right. So yeah, it looks like we've got that resolved. So let's let's build your trophy real quick, Duck Call. Um if you uh yep. want to uh, bring up your sheet. Yes, sorry. Uh this whole sharing screen thing yep. is not. And then after we make the trophy, we'll we'll take the next break. Cool. So let's say yes, yes, yes. All right. Uh, which one of these? I accidentally opened four different versions of everything. So <laughs> uh, I was thinking of just calling it the Pearl of the Swamp. Sure. Perfect. Um, I'm going to say uh, um, although I do not know it, it is very old. Um, and also I will say it's uh, generous because uh, if I were to request it, it offers me um, drops of venom. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That'll always come in handy. 
Okay. And is that is that all the things that are uh, true about it? Eh, it's mighty. That's it's shiny. It's mighty. Also mighty. <laughs> all right. So that's three extra dice of jet. And so I will designate these as black dice or jet dice, ebony dice, whatever other terms for that word. And I will say that. And that is how you get gather more powerful as a faded hero or gather more power as a faded hero. Get so, yourself a snake. Get yourself a, <laughs> a moist snake. <laughs> <laughs> don't oh, let the wait. others... Yeah, it's yeah. a snake. That's it. It'll dry off fast. It'll just keep rolling around my arm until like it's wiped everything off. Yeah, it's got you something cur- for everybody. Curl up party. on my shoulder thingy, where the sword yeah. live. Kind of burrow oh, no, on into my quarter staff. It curls itself up on mm, my yeah. Now. yeah 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 yeah. And you can get a companion and have it face the other way, and they just. It's good time. All right. Well, I guess this is this is our next break then. And, uh, yeah, let's take a break. All right. See y'all in a minute. Yep. Just uh, please make sure you put yourselves on mute and uh, we're all good. We're back in a couple minutes. everyone back let's see i'm just going to share the screen again Hola. can you can you guys hear me we can oh awesome. yeah, i can oh okay that sounds like everybody oh so uh next up to uh a piece of uh piece of fiction and that's dope art to go along with it uh, Queen of Bad Dreams, written by Danny Lord. Danny, you want to talk about your book? 
the comic? Uh, so Queen of Bad Dreams, uh, it's written by me, art by Jordi Perez, uh, colors by Derva Kelly, and letters by Kim McLean. Um, it is a story that is, uh, I guess, kind of uh, Paprika meets Blade Runner. Uh, it is a world uh, in which uh, people, creatures, and objects um, from dreams uh, can come out of dreams uh, and inhabit our reality. Uh, this has kind of been incorporated uh, into, like, into our system uh, with uh, what's called the Morphean Annex. Uh, where the inspector judges uh, are tasked with evaluating um, the so-called figments uh, and deciding whether or not uh, they are capable of functioning in our world, having a certain degree of agency, uh, and uh, are not harmful. Uh, the main character, Dahir, is uh, tasked with uh, finding uh, Ava, the figment who's escaped from the mind of a rich politician's uh, adult son. Uh, and then as we go further, uh, it quickly turns out that there's a bit more of um, a story there. And it's really about kind of agency and how much agency um, women, especially uh, queer brown women are allowed to have uh, in the world and over their own lives. I like and, it. And there are bizarre monsters because dreams make no sense. Uh, where can people find Is this out already? Uh, yes. Uh, the whole uh, complete story uh, is available. Uh, publisher is Vault Comics. Uh, you can either get it digitally from like Comixology uh, or you can get it from any bookstore that sells graphic novels. Nice. Thank you, Danny. No, uh, okay, so I'm going to stop sharing. Very and cool. And back to the show. All right. So where we last left our intrepid, fated heroes, um, somebody had been bonked on the head, somebody had fallen through some magic gruel, and somebody got themselves a snake, a moist snake. <laughs> um, but... We have we we still have yet to find the purple flower on the rot to make the bridge to get out of the swamp. So, faded heroes, what do you do? Um, I think I, I would probably try to recover as much as possible and refocus my task on finding the purple flower. Um, okay. You can do it. Do limb. <laughs> Thanks. You would do uh, it. Yeah. So I think this is where one of the other characters would ask one of those questions. Like, mm -hmm. what are you doing? What do you do? Mm -hmm. um. And so everyone's clear. You can also, if you are not the interested party who's trying to do something, um, you can, as a narrator, just drop something drastic on everybody. Like, if you're like, this is starting to take a little bit, let's get things moving. You can say, getting that snake out of the swamp awoke the swamp monster, Bill Ghoul, who... Whose name translates anybody... to purple flower. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. Or something along those lines. And all of a sudden, put everyone in a, in a dire circumstance that they have to escape out of. Um, that's a perfectly acceptable thing to do. You can even um, establish what the consequences are right now. You can say the snake sinks its fangs into your neck and kills you. And you might say, I don't want that to happen. And you say what you do in response. Right. Mm -hmm. I actually really love the idea of like, oh, there's a purple flower and just like trying to pull it up. But then it, it, <clears> it keeps like, a whole, like, going. A whole, like, <laughs> like the going Final Fantasy going. Mand like Mandragorian like Absolutely, uh, yeah. creatures. Yes. And so it is. Mm hmm. So who wants to explain how that goes down and what that looks like? And I think I already did. I feel, so Dooley will probably like, you know, start playing with his hat and is maybe like a little bit overly aware that Dakal is watching them and Ham Ham is just sort of like blithely cheering them on um, and is going to just kind of like squint at the swamp and look for any splash of color that they can find. Right, you find the purple flower. Find a purple flower. Pull it and up. And like trudge through the swamp, uh, trying to look cool again. Uh, and hopefully like, and like probably like 
uh, underhandedly like trying to wash off the rest of the glue <laughs> so they can look like they're, they're imagining like coming back like looking gleaming and you know hot <laughs> out of the swamp um, and yeah they just like reach down pull up this flower and it just sort of like grows up under their arm and then it just keeps growing and it keeps growing <laughs> and, and, like, so Doc really Call and Ham Ham big shaggy face emerges out up from out of the water oh nice mm -hmm. So Doc Call or Ham Ham, does it attack them? Does it start speaking? What goes, what happens now? Well, first of all, I'm just so proud of Doolim. You got the purple flower. You got it. What's the next thing we got to do? Doc Call, something about some rotted wood. What do we do? What do we do? Got a flower, got some wood. Uh. Like, guys, there's a face. There's a face. <laughs> <laughs> Pick some wood in it. Stick some rotted here, here. Have some wood. Are, are you, so you're you're attached to the big monster, is that right? I think you're probably just like holding it on the head, and it's just just having it's a. It's big a enough bit of... that you're kind of dangling off of it. Oh, there we go. Is okay. it is it is it like getting even taller? Are your feet lifting off the ground? <laughs> you uh, can just say that it's happening. Yes, that is not yes. something in Dulim so, control. You can just say so that it's the, happening. The monster with the purple flower uh, for its head is uh, at your touch. Is just like like lifting out of the swamp, lifting out of the swamp, and and Ham Ham um, maybe perhaps misunderstanding the oracular vision of <laughs> of rotted wood plus purple flowers. Like I'm just gonna I want to stick some wood in it and like. And like splashes to the place where this the snake of pearl was found with that like heap of rotten wood that had collapsed on itself and tries to start tugging at it. And then a second monster with a heap of wood for its head starts rising up out of the swamp. And then the monster with the rotted wood and the monster with the purple flower are glaring at each other like old enemies. And Doolin <laughs> and myself are both dangling. Like we both got <laughs> these monsters, we're totally in control. And then the creatures start fisticuffs. <laughs> Is this like a yeah. game of chicken, I'm assuming? So, like, I'm on top of one and, and Ham Ham <laughs> is on top of the other. <laughs> Well, so it's uh, not it's not had, hitting I, a motherfucker with another motherfucker. It's <laughs> they're actually <laughs> We thought we were in control, but we're just sort of now like trying to hold on, but we're sort of dangling at the same time. But maybe maybe we we like because we're heroes, we recover and we swing and like mount these things, but they have an agenda of their own and they start Hold on, if you're doing that, if you're if you're if you're uh, trying to trying to trying to tame this this beast, that's obviously not something that a mortal can do. Yeah. Uh, so roll those dice. Also, uh Julian, when you were just describing it, uh did you get uh just because I don't want to contradict, if you didn't make this clear, then this is true. Um that there was a long stretch of root before the head started being pulled out? Um, I'm going to say, yeah. So it has like a kind of dangly purple flower, <laughs> just sort of like swinging. Uh, Fabulous chapeau. Like as a rope? Okay. Mm. Um, mm. Yes, as a rope. Um, then I'll so, wait till... I was going to say, so let's roll, let's roll uh, Ham Ham's attempt to test themselves and tame their beast. Tame the rotted wood monster. The rotted wood monster. Um, that looks like a five. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of fives. One, two, so, three. You've done good. You've done good, kid. Um, and are you Ooh. shouting your name while you do this? Ham Ham! Ham Ham tames the rotted wood beast! <laughs> All right, so we'll add those fours to your destiny, too. Which um, is one, so it looks two. like you got two fours. Yep, yep so two fours. Just remind me what I have to do on my sheet. I, yeah. I have to check box. Yep, yeah, there's a little, little, little column of destiny check boxes towards the bottom. You check two of them now. Two of them. Now, do I still have two from the last time, or did I lose them in the contest? Nope. You can so you, you can four. use uh, you can use your destiny to make plans. You can burn them all at once to reroll uh, your dice if it didn't come out the way that you wanted, and that can have special effects. You can, for instance, get all of the things in a list which you usually can't do. Or um, I should point out they're the only dice you have when you're dead, and you are you are trying to die well. So um, you probably want to die when you've got around seventeen of them. I think is what works out probabilistically. 
I just wanted to know if I still had them from our last. Yeah, absolutely. So, yep. Okay. Yep. You accrue so, them. Yep. So now I have four total. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I've yeah. tamed my beast and I'm wildly elated about this. What else is happening? Well, so let's see. You have, it looks like one, two, three, four, five strikes. <laughs> of which you get three. Right. So you can pick three <laughs> things from the list. And then, um, let's see, did you get more jet than gold? No, nope, you got more gold than jet. Yep. So no demands can be made of uh, your named one. So they're not going to get to add any extra things that you have to do for them. Buy your named one. So oh, yeah, can, now, you talk, can you talk about that really quickly? Because I don't think that's happened yet. It has not, yeah. So in, in the case of a name dealer, if you get more dice of jet hey, or of hey. more gold than jet – then they get to make a demand of you. As a faded hero, yep. if you get more dice of jet than gold, your mortal power is outshining them. And they don't like that. They they think that's, you know, kind of uh, rude, I guess you could say. Yeah, impertinent. And so they demand that you do something else. And if you refuse, they can harm you. But if you know you just do whatever the extra thing it is that they asked you to do in that moment, then you're fine. But it does mean that you have to do something extra. Now, in this case, you didn't. You you got more strikes on your gold than you did on your jet. So you know um, your your uh, god is like good. Yes, you're using your moisture well. <laughs> <laughs> And so um, I, you said I have to choose three you can from get the test three. yourself? three, yes. You can pick three from the test yourself. So no other is harmed. Okay. I'm neither harmed nor ashamed. Mm -hmm. And I succeed in this trial. All right, cool. Yeah. So yeah, it goes super well then. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and describe how that goes down. So uh, the whole goal is to, I think, believe, um, correct me if I am wrong, the call the goal is to lay the purple flower on the rotted wood is that correct yes okay. this is turning out sexier than we expected yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, well i mean you know it doesn't have to be sexual necessarily but but when my please please make it just like kissy kissy kaiju <laughs> kissy, 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 kissy kaiju <laughs> well when my, when my rotted wood kaiju <laughs> <laughs> um, launched with itself at the flowery pistols of Petal Monster. Um, <laughs> there is a resounding uh, clash, the sound of bells, um, like birds oh. suddenly speak in tongues. The, the big giant frog ribbits like three giant bounds closer with like big heart eyes. And the, the, the sacred marriage of the two sw swamp gods kaiju things uh has been realized and where their two bodies meet suddenly a bridge of uh, of flowers um and and swamp oak spans the whole swamp as if it as if it had always been there for millennia cool Beautiful. yeah it's fantastic um, and uh, so now that my, my rotted wood monster is gone, I'm like, oh, look, a bridge. Look, there's my frog. And then I, I take off at a run across the bridge. That's the <laughs> now, I guess the real question at this point, then, is do Lim able to steer their kaiju on the bridge appropriately or <laughs> did something else happen? Yeah? Um, like, is the, is the prophecy fulfilled? I guess like I guess it is. So you could just let go if yeah. you wanted, yeah. Oh no, I wanna I wanna keep riding this kaiju over to the frog. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's let's do this then. Mm -hmm. Um I am oh I am sharing. Okay. I'm still sharing. I forgot that I'm still sharing. So we will go, you know, and uh Boy, there's you your roll. rolling great this whole game. <laughs> <laughs> Not that first one. That first one got someone bonked. <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So let's see, you got uh, uh, three, four nice strikes. Of, yep. Yeah, yeah. And uh, do you shout your name while you do this, of course? Oh, uh, yes, I will say that. Uh, do Lim the Dutiful. Ah, <laughs> uh, I have honorifics. Now, you're, you're coming with me. I don't know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. the it's time dutiful. for your honeymoon this way. Uh, 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 
<laughs> All right, so yeah, one, two, three gold strikes and one jet strike. So again, your ancestor, auntie's not going to tell you to do anything else. Mm -hmm. um, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> he isn't going to imply that you should do should have done something else. Yep, yep. They're like, that is exactly what I told you to do. Good job. Good job. <laughs> I did that. I got. I, I had them do that. And the auntie uh, would never do that. It it would just be oh oh. Perfect. Well, yeah. I guess, I guess you listen to me, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's it. This, this is why you should listen to me. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you've you've. It sounds like you've got control of this guy. You like crazy, but yeah. Of the three or of the four test yourselves, you get to pick three. Are you gonna go with uh, success, neither harm nor shamed, and no other is harmed, or are you gonna maybe hurt somebody and get some destiny for yourself? Um, let's see. I think I want to, I think I will seize a destiny and take a follower. Ooh. Um, as a trophy, can I just keep this? Yeah. Uh -huh. I was going to say, like, I, I can either keep the kaiju itself yeah. as my, as my mount. <laughs> I would love that. Yep. Your kaiju, your kaiju mount is now your trophy. So we get to build you a trophy. Okay. And, uh, so who, who gets harmed? <sighs> Um, and how does that go? Somebody around? else actually gets to say. Whoever's least interested That's gets true. to say. Someone else gets to say that. You're right. Uh, I think the... Does the god get to decide, which is now Cam? Uh, Danny and Ham Ham yeah. get to decide. Okay. Or Cam. Or, yes. Or Cam, yes. Uh, so we're getting to decide who's harmed in this scenario. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, can it be this the hat? <gasps> <laughs> uh, yeah, you can you can have the have the the hat swiped. Yeah. Well, what if it's oh, no, then the, the person who is harmed? I'm sorry, the, the hat is Dulim's, right? Yeah. Yeah, Dulim is not Dulim is not harmed. They they chose no, uh, they are neither harmed nor shamed. Okay. So they can't be harmed. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, Your kaiju so, could get hurt. <laughs> right, right, uh, but but it also it doesn't have like, a name. It has it to be it has to be somebody we're going to care about. Okay. Know. Actually, also, that or, kaiju or you, you does. Also, don't have to choose it. it that it, kaiju it, does have a name because oh, it is right. uh, the yeah. purple flowered one. Mm -hmm. But that's my trophy, which I yeah. think is the... that's a, you're, you guys are heroes. You're you, the only way for you to get friends is to have have them as trophies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Doc Call, how do you see the purple kaiju, purple flower kaiju, get hurt? Oh. Um. I think it comes from um, with the uh, as it kind of happens simultaneously to uh, when the bridge is forming uh, because what happens to it uh, is the roots of uh, its flowers actually um, partially entangle with the forming uh, like bridge and and uh, other uh, flora, uh, and it tears away. Does it bleed purple ichor? Is it uh, if you would like, I just <laughs> like ichor a lot. I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I like it. Lots it sounds like it would be a great moisturizer. <laughs> Ooh, maybe Ham Ham stops and collects some purple ichor and puts it in a special little vial. It, it, Ham Ham really enjoys collecting different kinds of moist uh, uh, things to in which to worship his god. So, so it sounds like we got two trophies actually. Then, oh. yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, let's uh, let's build Du Lim's kaiju trophy. Um, if you want to share your screen, we can build that. Um, it sounds like it might be a little less beautiful if that's an option though i don't think it is for trophies um okay old generous mighty and known to all yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um old mighty was um, definitely old and mighty yeah. i don't think generous it was not oh, it was okay. not giving up anything for you it was going mm. to going to fight okay um and i don't think it's probably known to all since none of us expected it or mm -hmm. yeah. had heard of it yeah. um so is the kaiju still around? Like, is, or is it is it just harmed? Is I don't it like think it's, I don't think it's either, right? 
I thought that. I mean, I mean, it's 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 around. I don't think it's it's harmed. They just they're. Well, there are two separate ones. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the flower one, uh, I think it was the the damage was the roots being pulled away, and then the rotted wood one. Uh, I think it became the plane that we are walking across, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it became the bridge, but the flower one did not. The flower one got you said there's one that got like uprooted and and there was some purple. Yeah, and that one got harmed. Yeah, but it's not dead. It's still like viable. It just got a little battered. Okay, it's just uglier now, which is fine because I'm Doolim. I have an ugly hat, and I don't think I am. I have a face only uh, Yogzesh the auntie could love. So, oh, um, oops. <laughs> she's probably told me. <laughs> she's probably the one that said that to me first. Um, so it is old. It is mighty. Uh, it has a name that is just going to. Uh, I'm just going to name it. Ding dong. <laughs> well, let me find you a name. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> if we have the technology. We can. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, this is this is the one that had a flower on its head, right? Yes. Okay, saved. I've added two dice of jet. Etosh. All right. E T A S H. H. The ugly kaiju. <laughs> the ugly not just ugly it's just a swamp kaiju yeah it is very beautiful to to do limb um cool okay so yeah you have another one um so now ham ham if you want to share your screen we can doing it yeah we can do your your vial of iker trophy uh gilgu the purple flower iker iker nice nice okay <laughs> Um, so it is um, mighty, very mightily sticky, mightily <laughs> smelly, and uh, mightily moisturizing under the right circumstances. Uh, generous with its moisturizing, sticky gooiness. Mm-hmm. No, no, it's not known to all. It's very specific, swamp specific. Old. It, it's just about as old as the purple flower monster. So I would say it's not old, but mighty and generous. Okay. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. perfect. You are really going to come in handy if you cats wind up out in the desert or something. Right? (laughs) (laughs) So I will update your dice as well. Do do, do. Do I need to update anything from from on my end? Uh, Well, you typed it on your character sheet, so it should be set. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, That is, again, how y'all get more powerful. So, yeah, there's a bridge. It leads to the frog. So who wants to say what happens next? I think that Doolin would try to recover a little bit of the of their self-esteem long enough to extend a hand to Dakal and be like, try to really coolly ask, like, do you want a ride? <laughs> <laughs> just you so you can, you can, so you can, so you can plan your <laughs> so that you can plan uh, this this seduction properly um at some uh, point if you actually make your move that is one of the four things you can do is follow your passion for another so you yeah. can be as coy as you want but you're not going to get you any roles just lay in the groundwork right now just <laughs> right, the groundwork. Right. <laughs> trying to be impressive um the other the other part of that actually i should say um uh that uh if you pursue a companion and they aren't into it they can shame you in response mm-hmm. um like you can uh if this is a you know some some other character who's just the name of the world like we can change their mind we can change their heart whatever but this is a, if this is one of us real world humans here um you can't seduce somebody against their will um it's, it's-, it's actually potentially fatally and immediately uh deadly um mm-hmm. uh so you you're right to try to figure is, out what is there were, what the uh read the room is what you're trying to do yeah uh is yeah. there a uh a third option like is it romance shame or shame or is it romance shame or like broskies or, like what what, did, what was the last option? Or broskies, you know what I mean? Like oh, oh absolutely. Like, do you, like, do you oh, well, I mean, yes. Yeah, no, it, you no, know, I was just checking in terms broskies. of like what? Okay, whether or not uh, absolutely shaming yep. is we required. Just best friends. I, I mean, the the um the, <laughs> just... 
be the, the distinction between those and the classics is actually pretty hazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that like you didn't have to like choose between just romance or shame as like the only. Two yeah, options. no, absolutely not. <laughs> I, I mean, so, somebody used this once to finally, mm-hmm. after everything, yell at their dad who was a thundercloud. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they they just like turned around and like threw their whole mission out the window and just went and and, and yelled at their dad for all the crappy god things that, that he'd been doing. Like, what it cares about is is the passion for the relationship, um, not uh not the particular content it's a passionate relationship is what you doesn't care. always have to be sexy times yep, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. um and actually i i feel kind of remiss i forgot so we've had ham ham do a thing we've had do do a thing what has the call been doing as this bridge formed um well i was actually uh i think going to uh respond uh kind of to do um offer of a ride um Basically, with uh, regaling um, Dulim with uh, the fact that many of the great tales uh, talk about the number of steps walked by uh, the hero in question, uh, especially if they themselves have not tamed uh, a, a kaiju um, or like a monster of their own. Um, however, um, I will make sure that whoever writes this story. Um, remembers your offer as well. Okay. So Dulim is trying to sort through that of like, so you're... Do you... It's completely useless. <laughs> They're gonna make sure that people talk about how you offered to call a ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, about, you know, granting uh, in, in, in Dulim's story... Uh, when they tell the story of Dulim, it will be important for bards to to remember that uh, Dakal was, was such, there. such an important part of the story that Dulim oh, uh, yeah. offered uh, uh, to 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 share a mount. But you know, they had each their own separate you know paths to walk, even if those paths are going in literally the same direction. <laughs> Ham Imagine- Hand <laughs> Ham Hand could use a ride to the great frog. Hello, Hap. I'll just, uh, <laughs> I'll just- my chop gruel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I, I imagine that Doolin would probably turn to Binu and ask them, like, does that mean that he wants to be my friend? Does, does do they want to be my friends? Like, what does this mean? <laughs> and I imagine I Binu is probably still only semi-conscious from being seized and then seized back. Um. So I guess we're all just like walking then, and probably like I don't believe the kaiju is probably actually that fast. It's very old and it's a swamp <laughs> it's a kaiju, plant. so it's probably just sort of like. It's a it's a moving plant, so I guess we're all just slowly walking across the bridge. Yeah. Nobody wants to try talking to it. Talking to whom? I'm sorry. To the kaiju? The monster. Yeah. Uh, Ham Ham doesn't talk to kaiju. Ham Ham wants to milk the frog. Ham Ham is, <laughs> is heading toward Ham Ham's destiny and wanting to coerce the frog into coming to Ham Ham because Ham 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 Ham's. Ham Ham's head is staved in and Ham Ham doesn't want to walk anymore. Can I coerce the frog to come to me? Yeah, that- well, you would have to coerce the frog somehow. Like yeah. it, threaten it. Yeah. In, in a role. So in so in this word, the chorus is not coax, it means threaten. Is that correct? Oh yeah. Yep. So you could seduce it. But but if I were to do coercion and not seduction, sorry, he's suggesting I seduce the frog, but I want to coerce it. So that would be like <laughs> Um, well, the, if the frog needs your moisture, then seducing it could be uh, regaling it with the wondrous uh, ingredients that uh, you know lock in moisture or something. Okay, so <laughs> if, I could do follow my passion and uh, and seduce the big the great frog with my my pouch full of gruel <laughs> and the face masks of your god. <laughs> so. Um, I have pockets full of my god, great 
great and beautiful froggy. And uh, I would love, I will give you, I will rub you all over with gruel and purple ichor and ungans uncounted. Should you, should you just take a few steps closer and uh, show me your venom glands, you know? So I think I get to do it. Is the rolling happen? You do. You get to, you get to roll. So I'm rolling in the seduction category. I'm following my passion. Yeah, so, yeah. We'll we'll see how the, the frog feels about that. Frog feels pretty good about it, apparently. Yeah. So uh, let's see. One gold, two gold, three gold, and one jet, two jet. Man. Yeah. <laughs> you guys just keep making your gods and other names happy and not pissing them off in any way, shape, or form. Like, not that they're happy is that they don't have the opportunity. Or they don't have the opportunity to, to yeah, mess they don't with have you. the opportunity. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't think anybody's done anything to really piss off their ancestors here. So even if they had the opportunity, they'd be like, "No, we're cool." Fair enough. <laughs> Why are we looking so, at the girl? Uh, I can't get enough of your love. Oh, I see. That is oh, what's going on. fair enough. <laughs> oh, that would have been cool. Stupid <laughs> commercials. Um, that's what everything is for. <laughs> Here, froggy, 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 froggy. Although this kind of works, you know, the outfit was good. There we go. <laughs> can you right, sing so... your? Can you sing it? Your your portion. <laughs> many times we loved, we shared love and made love. <laughs> <laughs> So you get to pick uh, three or just two in this instance. Uh, are any of them gold? I, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah she, she, there, there were some gold yeah. ones. Yeah, okay, great. So as long as at least one of them is gold, you can get three. So you can pick three of those four. Yeah, three of the four results. The object of, of your passion your pursues passion. you. Uh, oh. They're not a companion, so the rest doesn't matter. You are neither harmed nor shamed. No I am neither others... harmed nor shamed. No okay. other disputes with jealousy. Okay. I exchange a vow of friendship and take a trophy. Uh, can I take the milk of the frog as my trophy? Yeah. So Anybody else going to watch while this happens? It seems like they should have a private moment. <laughs> uh, Notice that I'm not watching. This is... Uh, <laughs> Doc Hall is not sure if this is the story that will be written by the bards. So <laughs> Require a uh, this, this might be the 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 part where the curtain falls. So he's just going <laughs> to slightly turn away. Yeah. You and I'll, I'll say a curtain of gruel will just fall over. Yeah, me. <laughs> just explodes out of your pouch at the height of the milking, and the gruel goes everywhere and screens everyone's vision. And we fade to black and take I a do, five minute break. And do we want to add any dice or anything? <laughs> we will. Yeah, we will build yep. your trophy um, after we come back from the break. Farewell. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Five minutes. Awesome. <laughs> that was amazing. You can contain yourself, Cam. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, I, I feel like this is sort of the um, uh, the the questions are going to be answered momentarily here. We're going to. I feel like we're we're up to a point where we just need a, a uh, an epilogue. We got some, yeah, some things resolved for sure. I'm currently trying to find where I can order Queen of Bad Dreams because it looks that sounded real real cool and I'm trying to see if I can order it from my little bookshop that's down the street When you see the beginning of it, uh, there's like a scribble monster is what I call it, even though it's not named on the page in the first few pages. Um, and so like that was something that like I described uh, in the script, but the what the colorist did to make it look the way it does, because it's one of my favorite things in the whole book, is um, she was like, yeah, I colored it in with my left hand so that it would look like a little kid colored it in because mm -hmm. it's actually supposed to be a monster that popped out of like a kid's nightmare. Uh, like uh like it's clever, just like clever. the opening one um and she did that and i was like i love you mm -hmm. this is amazing thank you that's so cool okay 
Yeah, it's always very cool working with an illustrator that brings your story to life. Mm -hmm. I've only ever done pretty much like one comic and it was with my older sibling, but like it was a, you know, story that it took me like 500 words to say nice. and that took them, I think, 12 panels and they just like just managed to bring his life in this way that I was just like, oh, these are completely different ways of storytelling. It's it just yeah, it I'm always like mind. I'm always like compared to prose writing, comics is just math to me. Hmm. It's like solving for X mm -hmm. because like generally speaking, you have like a page limit, you know, like on any given page with like without like style exceptions, it's somewhere between like three and six panels unless you're doing something really fancy so like and then unlike a prose book like you have chapter endings which like matter but like in a comic whether it's an odd and even page matters because it's whether something's going to be on the page turn you mm -hmm. know it's uh whether or not an action happens in like the bottom left corner or the bottom right corner is whether it's next to the fold or you know you know, the last image you see on a page. Uh, and so it's very much like just increasingly detailed outline until it's suddenly a script mm -hmm. um, as opposed to like, and like you're not writing for the reader, you're writing just for an artist to translate, right? And then to add to. Uh, so, you know, you so don't necessarily have the space to be like, and they were thinking this and they were feeling this, like, no, you would just write and this person frowns, you know, like, mm -hmm. but on the plus side, if you're like, I kind of know what I want to happen here, but like at the end of, but like, I don't know if it's technically physically possible. So these are the three things that need to be true after this fight. I'm gonna script it out. But artist, if you think it's stupid, just ignore it and I'll fix the dialogue later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... Actually, let me ask you this. Uh, what medium are you more comfortable in writing, comics or prose? Prose, actually, uh, even mm -hmm. though I do way more comics right now. Uh, prose is where I started. Uh, it's actually, uh, I've been uh, a lot this year in the place where it's like my deadlines have prevented me from doing a lot of prose right now. But I'm like, I miss prose so much right now. Uh, but also like the collaborative stuff in comics is really fun uh, I happen to do a lot of co-writing with my best friend so that helps but also I'm naturally a very like internal and sensory writer you mm -hmm. know like uh the things that like you can't rely on in comics like I was I, gonna say that seems mismatched to that yeah point. like uh if you're doing like some old school classic versions of like you know old school horror comic narrative there's a bit more you can do but that's uh in terms stylistically that's not as popular in comics right now so like I can forcibly do it like if I choose to tell a story in that style but like you kind of have to be very specific about that but like mm -hmm. otherwise you know I tend to write about like how things you know physically feel or what's inside the head or you know stuff like that although I do like really like writing combat uh so like prose for me I'm like there's a reason mo like even though I I mostly lean towards horror um more of my horror stuff is in prose uh, yeah because you can you can experience the horror of the situation better yeah like someone I, else's perspective yeah yeah you know like and and uh i write a lot of werewolf stuff which because i like writing about like the transformations or like fear of transformations there's only so much you can actually do with that if you're not being incredibly internal mm -hmm. right right um because that is an internal struggle in yeah that particular case yeah oh very cool um not to cut you off but um i think we're at the end of our break um so i cam can, are you there i yeah. i i'm here so i can you all see my screen sure, we can sure. yes okay so this is from claire would you share claire please explain what we're looking at here so this is the anthology called A Sinister Quartet and Mike <clears throat> Allen from Mythic Delirium approached me initially to see if I had a novella because he had a novella and we were going to do one of those sort of like back-to-back -back novella things um, like they used to do in days of old with a da yellow paperbacks and stuff. Um, but it turned into four long fictions. And I say that because we were supposed to write novellas, but then mine got 
bigger. And so I have like a short novel. So it's like 65,000 words, but mine's called uh, The Twice Drowned Saint. Um, it has a much longer title that I can't actually access right now. Um, <clears throat> Uh, yeah no it's not coming <laughs> for, for a moment I saw a flash of it but it is a, like it's secondary world fantasy all the four long fictions in Sinister Quartet by four different authors are all horror or dark fantasy I would say mine is borderline it's secondary world fantasy with some I think somebody called it body horror I you know I wasn't aware that I was writing in any genre or sticking my but there are there are horrible things happening um but I would say I wouldn't categorize it as horror necessarily or or the middle is horror or like 80% of it is horror. But is it all horror? Like if it doesn't end horrifically, is it horror? Anyway, there are gross angels. There's a, a reluctant saint. There's the cinema. There's a city in the desert surrounded by a serac of ice that is very like tall and blue and impenetrable because the god made it and uh, before the angels ate their god. So so. So things are going down in this angelic city. There is a uh, revolution in the air as as Bob Dylan would sing. And it's, I don't know, I, it's the latest thing I wrote that was published. It was published just this year in July. I'm very fond of it. It's bizarre, it has a strange structure and um, like early cinema meets weird angels, I would say is part of it. And, and um, very bad, very bad civic practices on the behalf of tyrants. <laughs> have something to nice. do with it. It sounds like really far out. Mike that Allen is, really cool. is uh, definitely let you guys do uh, whatever comes whatever comes out of your heart and put on the page. He says yes. And it sounds amazing. And I'm I'm not even the weirdest thing in that book because Mike Allen has a story. <laughs> <in that. laughs> uh, okay, so uh, that was that is the last break. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we're going to kind of uh, move into, I guess, the epilogue. Yeah, the and, last act, it looks like. Yeah. And I got um, one more thing to say after the epilogue, and then sure. we're out of here. I'm gonna Sounds sure. like a plan. So I guess right now, uh, do you want to build a trophy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, real fast then, but let's do that, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, if you want to share your screen, we can um, sure. fill this sucker out. So, oh, so it's the milk of the frog of Nash. Uh, div, may, uh, uh, yes. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. Very much needed, yes. Yeah. And it's exciting. It is old. The frog's been there a long time. It is mighty. It has lots of potent powers, not only as a moisturizer, but as. Uh, Exfoliant. Ex <laughs> I was going to say aphrodisiac, aphrodisiac, exfoliant, you know, depends on your kink. Um, it, it, it is generous. There's a lot of it. It's not known to all. It was very specific. My God was like, yeah, you yeah. Can get this kind of moisturizer. And I was like, okay, okay, mum's on me. Tell Shaq Zora I'm on it. But I don't know how well it was known. All right. So that's an additional three dice of jet. So and I gotta come. The guys need to conspire to keep those dice of jet and gold away from you because you guys have been killing it with the <laughs> dice today. Right. So yeah, you guys are definitely making waves. Uh, other players, does do you ha think anything takes notice and maybe wants to have something to say about that? Hmm. I got I got nothing. Um. I wonder oh. I wonder if the an interesting complication is that instead the the frog monster just becomes so enwrapped with Ham Ham the Gub Gub that they don't want Ham Ham to leave or that they want to like come with us. Or that they just want to like eat Ham Ham like like a delicious little gub gub. <laughs> well here's a here's as a, as a gesture of <laughs> affection. So um, they didn't choose the object of your passion pursues you, but it is at your editorial discretion whether that happens. So you can do that. You can have the you can have the frog be just really way more into it than you would have expected. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm oh so baby, sorry that I you ain't going that. nowhere. <laughs> 
<laughs> in that case, uh, yeah, I, I think that's the that is the the complication that I would put on Ham Ham the Cup Cup. So yeah, you're milking them and you get done and they're like, I didn't say stop. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I could use some help here, guys. Guys. Uh. Where'd you Don't go? Call. Don't call. I don't want a big frog. Please help. Um, I mean, uh, Dakal would, would uh, jump in for the fight. Um, uh likes you'd probably see uh like pearl of the swamp kind of like skitter to the side not like leaving but just like not to be on the quarter staff which is about to be used um and uh basically kind of runs in uh full force to kind of like I guess nail the uh, frog uh, between the eyes with, uh, the, with quarter the quarter staff. staff. Mm-hmm. So, are you, would you consider that coercing the frog to leave Back off, um, yeah. home alone? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, uh, we'll share them on screen, and we will see if the luck holds up. And boop boop. Uh, oh, uh-oh. Yeah. Well, you got one strike. You got yeah. one strike. Yeah. One strike. Um, oh, is there a strike? Oh, damn. There is one strike on yep. a gold dice. Yes. Yep. There are no strikes on the jet dice. So, again, yeah. your, your entity does not get to mess with you. Um, <laughs> so, you get to. Now, you, did you scream your name while you did it? Uh. He doesn't know how to say a sentence without using his own name. Perfect. Um, <laughs> just as a general rule. That sounds right. Does he, um, does yeah. he speak in the third person? Does... A lot of the time, yeah. <laughs> um, as if they're writing or, their or own is, story. Yeah. Or, or is always telling other people to either take note or how, or how they should write about him. Mm. Perfect. Uh, which usually ends up kind of sounding like third person because he's like, no, like, this is how you should, you know. <laughs> um, uh, but it would basically be like Dakal demands that you uh, release uh, Ham Ham. Nice. Thank so, you. yeah, you've got a whole mess of four. Or no, you only got two fours. But you get to add two Destiny okay. um, to your Destiny boxes. And, yes, yeah, so you get to pick. They do as you demand or else you may harm them. Um, you are not harmed in the exchange, or no other is harmed. Uh, I will. Uh, so essentially, uh, when it's the uh, basically a stern kind of like flip and whap into the, uh, between the eyes, uh, and it's not so much that uh, the frog does as I command, so much as is forced back, like in a in like as much as a frog can can stumble back. Um, Somebody want to speak for the frogs? Yeah, or is it because the frog is to say if the frog backs off, the frog decides if it backs off or gets or takes the harm. Uh, I just, I just like the gub gub. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to fight you. I just want to be with the gub gub. <laughs> oh, but I will just go sad. back to the Goodbye, Gub Gub! Gub Gub Gub! Burning oh, in such sweet sorrow. Broke his froggy heart. <laughs> so it sounds like some other is harmed, and that's the uh <laughs> the pride. It sounds like maybe maybe the frog is harmed. I, mean, I don't know. I think you, you let you let the frog go, right? Yeah, so uh, so which one did you actually pick? I'm sorry. Well, I picked uh that it does as I said. Okay. Yeah, um yeah, yeah. and basically that that means uh while it backs off, uh Dakul is kind of like braced in front of uh Ham Ham, uh just like, you know, very staff at the at yeah, at the ready doing, you know, Elliot Spencer type twirl of the quarter staff. Right. Um, right. Posing like a motherfucker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Ham Ham owed, owes Doc Call a life debt. So other players, um, the other two Wait, options. Hold on, hold on, are... hold on. Ham Ham, uh, roll those dice. That is following your passion. Throwing yourself at somebody else's feet is following your passion. Fair oh, enough. Uh, Ham Ham owes big life debt. <laughs> follow passion. Must follow Doc Call and give life debt. This is it's at least enough dice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think you. I think you need to I shrink think, the dice yeah. or something. Yep. But Can you do that? I I'm feel like sure. the followers. Like that feels like it. Et following the passion ends in me having a follower. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Well, you exchange a follower friendship and take them as a trophy. Um, uh, so, uh, oh, uh, t t yeah. Well, you would have to follow your passion for them back. Um, but, you, but I think you're right. I think um, they're making themselves a trophy of you, for you. That, yeah, definitely. Ham Ham will be trophy until Ham Ham fulfills debt. Um, <laughs> so, so, okay. Uh, Doc Cool would then say, um, all that I would ask is that you make sure three bards tell the tale of the day that I saved you. Ham Ham knows lots of bards. Gub Gub bards. Do they count? Uh, will, they spread, <laughs> will they spread the tale? In Gub Gub Far and wide? Far and wide and gub gub. That's fine. <laughs> I did, I, All I right. Well, this seems like a pretty good conclusion for these two, at least. What so is I, the do so I just, so I just want to note, I just want you guys to note, just if you look at the dice, they're struggling. They want to fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've been watching them this whole time. And I'm it's like, the physics creepy. in here is weird. Yeah. There's a lot of physics yeah. in this dice roller. Uh, they're, they're twitching. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no, oh, this is for it wants it wants sweet release. Do it, do it. There. There it is. Wait, did that start other ones uh, shaking? Yeah, it did. Mm -hmm. I get there's too many in that screen. They all, <laughs> oh, they're just about to come alive. You have all become so powerful that you you are breaking the mechanics they're that we are using. Yeah. <laughs> I so what, how's do Lim? How's what's do Lim doing with all this? Oh, uh, I think do Lim has because do Lim is a, is a dramatic lad. <laughs> do Lim is the dutiful and also the dramatic, uh, and is just sort of like taking this to heart of like, woo, you had your chance, and you sat here and just were waiting for your aunt to like tell you what to do instead of. Thwapping is the... does Doolim look uh look like is is it noticeable that Doolim looks miserable? Oh, absolutely. They have no no game on their face. So. Uh, so um, Doc Doc Hall would would turn and just be like, "You are welcome to tell the story of me as well." <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh. I'd suggest that that's the closing line. Yeah. I think that's, that's it. That's it right there. Yeah. That is the tale of the call being told by all. And it is true because it rhymes. In gub gub. In many languages, it's already poetic. That's fantastic. All right, Cam. Oh, okay. So first, just uh, everyone, thank you so much. This is. It, it's it's fun to be where Liam uh, Liam is, but it's actually even more fun just to be able to sit here and watch as this story gets uh, uh, gets created and folds in front of my eyes. And I think for me, like the, my favorite part here is uh, you don't know where the next part of the narration is going to come from or where it's going to go, uh, and watching that because it, everyone here was actually was really really nice about. Uh, about the kind of yeah. um, respecting the kind of choices the other characters are making because once a character makes a choice that means essentially that there are other choices that they did not make for which the other characters can rather the other players can take advantage as the NPCs as the DMs of the moment to uh, to make life more conf more difficult uh, or more exciting let's put it that way we'll yes exciting. that is and a better it, more challenging and it seemed like the three of you paralleling each other in a way that I think mm -hmm kind of escalated to something that was not overly dangerous, but really fun to watch and comedic in a way that, no, not accidentally funny, you know, sometimes <laughs> that happens. 
Uh, so I, I really appreciated that. I just want to get you guys your, your feedback before I say my last thing on, on the game. So you experience playing the game and and whatnot. If anyone wants to go, I'll just start. I love uh, I love the the name generator so much, mm-hmm. and I love the ability to dive back in and be able to quickly and spontaneously mash sounds together to create a world. I think that's very clever, and um, I like how the heroes. <laughs> Uh, sort of our continually self-discovering through ego and <laughs> and acts of valor um like it, like they're just like do limb got increasingly like the the character just like from the hat and the auntie god and the and the backpack oracle and then their their hopeless love for um dakal <laughs> just grew more and more like lag lacrimose and and also just like endearing and how dakal is just not not a bad dude you know like <laughs> could be brosies you know like <laughs> thing of me well who That's wouldn't want to be friends with me yeah like uh, they're all saving from a giant frog that's like like just like nice like nice dude like you're gonna have a dude bro that call is the dude bro to have you know <laughs> like I, I did feel taken care of those slightly bashed in but that was my fault I, <laughs> that I wasn't supposed to take i just got excited you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Up. <laughs> very cool uh uh danny how about you um i really enjoy the trophies um partially because um it's always it's a system that allows you to just constantly kind of like get cool stuff, uh, <laughs> you know, which is always kind of like fun to create um, and kind of encourage you to kind of like make all those mystical items that like normally, like say you're doing a short campaign and like some other systems, it might only be like maybe you each get one. And it's, it's plus one. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I like that too. And also, whatever you get. You're not just getting a thing; you're building a relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Hewlett, there, I'll... there were no name dealers here, but there's a good chance that, behi- at the very least, behind your back, they would have been talking to your trophies and uh, uh, making their own making their own arrangements. Um, not having any of uh, any name dealers on hand, except for one that was a bit of a a bit of a hot potato, <laughs> uh, meant that uh, uh, that they tended to be a little bit more um, things, um, but they. Uh, I was really happy to see you guys all start taking opportunities to, to make each other into your trophies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you live. I mean... Uh, uh, Nino. Nino. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have a real name, too. Name you know, whatever. <laughs> Every time I see you. I have, friends, I, I have a couple of friends who I see more on Facebook now than I see in real life, and their mm-hmm. Facebook name is different from... Mm. I mean, I have friends that I play D and D with, and every so often I have to be like, "That's not, that's not Ron Chase. That's that's Matt." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was really confusing for a little while. Um, but I think one of the things that I really loved most about this game was the the very deep collaborative nature of it, and that we get to bounce ideas off of each other um, and check in with each other, or like uh, get ideas back from each other. And also, like, there's not a single person really running the game that all of the choices um feel like choices and also like that you can push back against them and sort of like twist them around as well like Mm -hmm. um you don't have to abide i guess by like any one person's vision of the game uh, or like what's going on and what's going to happen and you have to sort of found a find a really interesting middle ground um which I think, like, it was really interesting because at first I was like, okay, we've got Ham Ham the Gub Gub, and then we've got to call the Muse of the Bards. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's an interesting dissonance happening there. Uh, but it was really interesting to see it kind of come together and coalesce into this uh, funny series of, of moments, I guess. Yeah, I just want to reiterate though something else. Like, there's there's built-in consent to the game. You know, mm-hmm. like you like you said, not somebody's one vision. So, you know, you if you played enough D and D. You know, you know, there were some DMs you play with them once. Like, hey, you know what? That's enough. <laughs> mm, yeah, <laughs> you're too much. Yeah, when you start, you know, munchkining the characters, and you're the DMs. Like, oh my goodness. Okay, I yeah. can do for a story as well. Um, and yeah, to to the other point that um, you can kind of object to something that somebody else is kind of narrating. Even that objection is just another form of narration in this particular system. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't. Nothing ever gets stopped. 
like there's not a hard stop to things. Like one of the most frustrating things about games is that <laughs> you do a thing that prevents things from happening because that's boring. But this yeah. is just something else happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. The only the only place, and it took some engineering, but following your passion, um, I had designed all those actions to follow the classics pretty closely. And there's a lot of rape and uh, in the classics. And somebody pointed out that the way that it had been written at the time is that that follow your passion wound up you you could use it to having sex with somebody until they loved you. Ooh. And I was like, hmm, that's that is what happens in the classics, and we're not playing that game. <laughs> That's yeah. not how this is going to work. Write that right was, out of there. Yeah, yep. And it, it took some. It took some redesign. I panicked for a minute. I was like, "Oh my god, maybe you know, there's this rot at the core," but there wasn't. Um, and that was that was the only place where I've where it's designed so that should that come up, and I'm primarily thinking about convention games where you can step on each other's toes and hearts more readily, but it happens among friends too. I don't want it to stop play. What I want to have happen is that the, the person who instigates that, who at giving them the benefit of the doubt has misread the room, has wound up walking into a situation where their character dies. That happens all the time. You all saw like how easy it is for your character to die sometimes, sometimes really capriciously. And so I just wanted that to just be something like, we're just going to keep rolling. That person is going to have to do the work of figuring out uh, like if they want to continue playing, if they want to make a new character or whatever, and not do that next time, or maybe just not, maybe it's not worth the work. Right. So I want it to be, uh, I, I want it to be on them. Um, I want, don't want it to be something where like everybody has to stop play because somebody was being an asshole about it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, basically that sums it up. Uh, yeah. People who want to continue playing, they figure out how not to be an asshole. They want to stay yeah. in the game. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So uh, first, again, uh, a thank you to everybody else. Uh, also, I just want to play one more video uh, here because I think it's my favorite thing. Claire knows what I'm going to play. Joshua, you know, they know what I'm going to play. Uh, it's very white, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so as I said before, this is all in service to uh, production for the Clyde cast. We do make uh, art for the stories in the Clyde cast. And one of the things that we did uh, was one of uh, another friend of mine, Jennifer Chu, she did a drawing for, for Claire, Claire's story slash song. Uh, uh, and we animated basically the creation of it and put it to music. So I'm going to play this because cool. it's really cool. And I will now share my screen. <laughs> And I think the music is set and I will hit oh, expand it, expand it. Yes, 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 yes. I learned my lesson. Awesome. Okay. There we go. Move the mouse. That's just too damn dope. Who composed music? <laughs> Say it again. Oh, I have, I have. So, um, Marcus Song, uh, one of BSW member, uh, he is our musicologist. So he has you know, a ridiculous uh, breadth of knowledge of, of songs and music. Like last year, so it's last year's season, season two, we had a little Bowie in every single episode, every single, every single uh, story. There was some Bowie put into it. And he, I gave him the stories and said, uh, what can you find? And I, I kid you not, in 48 hours, he had figured out the perfect song to go with every story. Uh, public domain or, or just yes. like you, enough, it, short enough that... Uh, yes, and keep, or keep it very short because like, it plays under the liner notes, you know, as, as, you're, as it's taking you out of the story uh, and under the credits for a bit. So yeah, so it's yeah. just, he's doing the same thing for the, the same thing. I, I will, 
I will actually have to go back and look at who that artist is and put them in so you guys can find the music. Uh, but it's just, it's just really brilliant. And so like what Kaleidocast does is we try to build stories upon stories uh, and, and, uh, and try to find a way to accentuate whatever our authors are doing. And that also comes across in, our, in the Patreon. Uh, so every, every season we have what's called the Exquisite Corpse Story. And what that does is we take, uh, we ask our authors to, to uh, write one big story together around a particular genre. And it, it just, they just take, one person starts a story and the next person takes it, takes it and it goes wherever it goes. And last year's story was a horror called It Began in Red Hook. And that was written by myself, Mike Allen, Ted Rabinowitz, Carlos Fernandez, Lila Wild, Fran Wild, Robert Krasnoff, Bradley Robert Parks, Evan Burko, J.M. Plumley, Marcy Arlen, S.A. Chakraborty, Fenderson D. Clark, and Kat Valente. And this year's story is a space opera, or rather, it started with a space opera, and then it became a uh, space romance, and then Pirates with Domain, and suddenly it's become a choose your own adventure. Uh, and then uh, Joshua made into a fiction, uh, to a meta text. So, and this is being written by Sam Schreiber, Zigzag Claiborne, Ted Rabinowitz, Joe Ledzinski, Mimi Mondell, Nikki Smith, Sandra Fink, Max Gladstone, Chris Dykeman, Marcy Arlen, Joshua A.C. Newman, Brad Parks, E.C. Myers, Sarah Pinsker, and Merck Rusta, C.S.E. Cooney, and Carlos Hernandez. And we're only about halfway through it, and it is nuts. Um, <laughs> it is... <laughs> I can't describe to you. <laughs> Genuinely nuts. They're taking a story. Like they, they, they fit the doctor in, the, the doctor. Uh, ah. And, uh, well, we, I mean, with, you know, with no copyright issues, you know, so doctor. Uh, and, uh, and just made it work in the most beautiful way possible. So if um, you guys are listening, people who are watching, uh, please, uh, it's the Kaleidocast at NYC, NYC. It's going to be the Patreon slash, of course, slash Kaleidocast NYC, uh, where uh, we will be also having more games and uh, uh, please, uh, uh, to support the author so we can pay them as much as possible. Uh, so that's basically all for me. Uh, thank you guys. Unless you have anything else you want to say, I know that Danny has to get out of here. Um, but that is all. So good night. Thanks nice. for organizing thank this you. Great playing, guys. Nice. You guys have a great night, all right? Again? Okay. Good night, everybody. everybody. Good Thanks to meet you. Everyone. Thanks again, Liam and Joshua. Bye. Good night. That was good. Thank you, Liam. You are really good at this. Oh, well, thank you. I've been yeah. doing it since I was nine, so it's like yeah. one, of, one of the two skills that I have. <laughs> <laughs> if only it was those cat it was like it's a category, it's a, it's a job in the category of million dollar skill. You know, I mean just move it I know. To the left just a little bit. Because uh, he wouldn't even talk to me now. That's why I told my brother, because I'm the oldest, and I was like, do something that'll make you money and do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> like, on the side, I did not do that. Well, but... <laughs> do what I say, not as I do. Right. I, um, you've got a really good grasp on the on the on the heart of the game, too. Oh, good. Uh, I'm glad. I was like, I was a little worried that I was like staring it in the wrong directions a few times, but you you course corrected me for sure. The, yeah, I mean the the thing that um the thing that is hard for a lot of people to grasp is that the rules are actually really strict, and um. Uh, and then when you when you engage them, you have to do what they say, right? But the rules are like are things like take the ones that are true, right? It's a cheating, and right. it's just because it makes the game worse, right? Take, so you choose the things that are true. You say the things that are true. Um, and I didn't push on this too hard because it, it was sort of toward the end. But the thing where like you say what your character does and says, not what they think and feel, except except when it's a lie, um, including right. yeah. when it's a lie that is the truth because you have to assume that it's a lie so maybe they're misleading you right right and that's just to make everything everybody act vivid you know it's so that they describe what's what's uh what's really going on and gives them opportunities to change their mind that actually came out of the um following your passion rule too like i didn't want somebody to have to make believe that their character felt a way they didn't have to sort of rewrite the character you can rewrite more minor characters um uh but you, you've you've got a, a a great handle on that stuff. The way that people wound up collaborating, I think, wound up being really really good. There's a little bit of fumbling around because they didn't couldn't see where yeah. the walls were at first. Right, um, trying to figure out how to make action happen is is a little bit harder. 
um, yeah. at first. Once you yeah. start realizing, it, it moves a lot faster. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, all it, it's that plus a comfort level with the people. So yeah. you, know, right. you don't want to right. you don't want to drop another no drop a god in the middle of somebody's action. If what I do at conventions, what I do at conventions is when they're sort of hemming and hawing. I said, an arrow sails out of the woods into your eye, and they're like, "Wait!" I was like, "Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna pierce the back of your skull." And let, I mean, unless you want to do something about it, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like and like every so often, I feel like one time one person was like. No, I can take it. I was like, aha, that's testing yourself. I was like, oh, all right, okay. <laughs> you got me. Yeah, that's like awesome. making things happen. I think, I think if I were to play it again, um, I mean, like, this was fun. I'll, I'll tell you, it, doing this with you all was much less stressful than the planning of it. The planning of it was like, who am I going to get oh, for what? this? You yeah. know, what if a lot of a lot of assholes show up? How am I going to make sure that works? Um, you know, and and making sure everybody knows the rules and that, that even that that's make sure that that's interesting to watch. I mean, right. you know, so that was more complicated than this. This just took time to sit down and do this, but it's like, sitting are, down are you play. saying that it's more fun to eat a cake than to bake a cake? <laughs> Cause I think you're saying it's more fun <laughs> to eat a cake than to bake a cake. More fun to eat a cake than get the ingredients to bake the cake. <laughs> Shopping for ingredients for a cake. not the fun part. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really, I was just saying to Carrie, like, I appreciate so much all the kitten hurting that you do to make this stuff happen. Yeah, it no, is, it is very impressive, man. I am so bad at this shit. And, like, I, in convention years, which we have not had in a while, but like I'm trying to wrangle like 10 people and very often I'm just like, I don't know who's coming. I don't know who we're paying for. Fuck it. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And it's you usually what, come out okay by the end. But well, You know, the, the thing that, that was actually kind of freeing, quite frankly, is um, the attendees, right? The attendees and me having no control over the attendees and quite frankly, them showing up was kind of it was the point because if you show up, that means that at some point you subscribed or you've you you have you have um, committed some Eventually time or interest. energy or art. Like yeah. you, uh, you you've been a part of this in some way, or you or you're you are you submitting and therefore money and that's why you're here. Yeah, uh, we did this at a point in the in the the the, the Patreon campaign where we basically hit our goals. Right. Nice. So this is kind mm. of meant to be like the rock booster to get us over the Just point. Like gravy. Yeah, yeah we're, like, we're like thirty-six dollars away. And honestly, if we don't get those additional thirty-six dollars, I don't really, I don't really care that much. <laughs> yeah. Right. We just um, reach into our pocket. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like it's, that's, that's how much. I mean, that's how much I would pay for. Are there, how many, how many people are in the BSFW total? Uh, about one hundred and fifty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so if everybody put in 30 cents you'd have it is that right i'm <laughs> about that yeah, yeah. Somewhere around uh, there, unfortunately yeah. you can't really go that low on patreon then they're taking out taxes then it ends up being 60 cents yeah. uh but um yeah so i mean like it's it's but having done this now and have kind of like the setup like the setting up near uh the uh, uh the zoom and since i have it now if i was to do another game i could just take this and duplicate this process, right. and, and, and and it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I was not, to be honest, I was not planning on doing another game. But since this is set up, if anybody feels like they are comfortable and they want to do it again, it's fine. But it has to be after like the holiday season. Oh yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah. This, is, this has been rough. Yeah, it's something alive after it. Yeah. yeah. I uh, have always, when I used to do freelance, which I've stopped doing because it's exhausting. I used to say. You think it's going to be different this year, but we're not going to get anything done between the second of second week of November and the second week of January. And like that seems ridiculous, but I'm going to send you stuff, and you're not going to get it back to me. And then you'll wonder where where it went. And the answer is your inbox. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's, it did. I'm like, when we're trying to do the podcast during a pandemic, where we can't be in the same room. Therefore, we yeah. have to we're recording together on Zoom, separate mics, which in some ways actually makes it easier to get clean audio so we don't yeah. hear each other's information but that means that everybody has to have a decent mic everybody has to be in a quiet place and even yep. with that happening i still find that i have to send my audio or audio to another audio engineer just to clean it up mm. i don't have yeah no that makes sense but yeah this but but usually we i would do we would the producers like me brad and sam last year jessica plumley we would sit there and do all of that ourselves and we're still going to end up doing the majority of it ourselves. And we had, last time we did it, we had the whole summer to do it. But because of, because the actors can't find quiet places to work, 
right? Because the yeah. studios are shut down. Yeah. Uh, because they now got to take care of their kids, you know, because we have time. Because I've been sitting at a screen, looking at a screen from seven o'clock in the morning till now. I just, I'm not my right state of mind to do it either. That's everything yeah, yeah, else. Yeah. So everything, everything takes longer. We were originally, we were supposed to be publishing our first episodes in August. Might not be till January, February. Which, wow. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, it just, it, it just takes that kind of time. There's no way around. The only yeah, good yeah. news is that people have been really cool about not, seeing the podcast yet as long as they continue to get whatever it is that yeah some kind of content yeah yeah yeah, yeah so uh, my, my experience has been that people are actually really really supportive on my patreon um like shit started going down and like people started to show up to like there were a couple, a couple of people dropped because like people lost their jobs and stuff but people have been really showing up um that's right really my patreon's probably gone up by it had been because I'd sort of made some promises that I was just taking a long time to, to make good on them, uh, and I hadn't been able to do proper promotion. Promotion is the thing that makes it happen, uh, unsurprisingly. Um, it's the marketing. And, no yeah, it's, it's terrible. It's, it's so awful because I'm like, hey, everybody, I feel shitty about trying to remind you about this all the <laughs> fucking time, but every time I do, people are like, you have a Patreon? And I'm like, I've had a Patreon for six years. <laughs> like, <Damn. laughs> I've had a Patreon since like ten months into into Patreon, something like that. A year, I guess it was a little over a year. Uh, I started my Patreon. Like, how are you just like? I feel like it's all I talk about, and I don't want to talk about it. I just want to make stuff. Oy. But yeah. like, people are just really supportive. That has been the the overwhelming experience that I've had. Like, people have fucking stepped up. So I've got two Patreons. One of them is my science fiction art and music and stuff, and the other one is just blogging about teaching. Because I get paid such dick by the place that I teach, um, that basically I've doubled my income by running a by running a monthly blog, a single post monthly blog. Wow! Um, uh, on Patreon, and people have stepped up just because they know it's important to do and it's hard. Um, and uh, there's one guy; it's uh, nine hundred, about nine hundred, a little less than nine hundred dollars a month right now. Uh, that Patreon is, and. 700 or something like that is one guy who's just wow. like, yeah wow. he's just like you're doing something really important um uh he's he's a single black dad living in central massachusetts like he's just like uh which is what you're doing like wow. i'm teaching this in this little elementary school uh, you elementary, are yeah. a renaissance artist with a patron is what you are wow. <laughs> wow. That's, that's really, really what that cool. is and i was like holy like it showed up and i was like holy shit dude and it was because like i was like i gotta push my uh my education patreon i just gotta get that number up there because right now i'm getting you know whatever it was the time is less than 200 dollars a month like you know they grow wow. over time but like it's so exhausting the whole point is that it reduces some of the pressures of teaching and uh and I was like, okay, everybody, don't forget, I do this thing. And he was like, oh, I've been meaning to do this for a while. I was like, I guess it's really, really important <laughs> to just do that <laughs> promotion stuff. It's, He's a yeah. sweet fucking dude. He's a really, really nice person. Well, that's that's amazing. I mean, it's it's one thing. It's like it's one. It's it's it sucks that you have you literally have to do it, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And two, the fact that the internet reached this guy, you know, yeah. and this yeah. guy out of everywhere. I mean, oh, the, internet is, yeah. the internet's great. It's the, one of the best inventions we've had since the automobile. But like yeah, the automobile, you can either fire. run someone over or you can <laughs> yeah. take someone to the hospital. Much so, like fire, yeah. yeah. Or you can run somebody over on the way to the hospital and say, yeah. well, who was that? Back yeah. up and hit him again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was nothing. Just a bump in the road. Uh, yeah, I mean, what's amazing is, like, he knew about my games over the internet, and then we met – at PAX East, where he shows up every year to our to our booth. Like, he fucking found me last year. Everything was completely fucked up this year. Like, I, I didn't have a full booth. I was wound up being by myself instead of with my whole crew. He still came over and, like, found me, and I got to meet his kid, who the last I knew was a fucking baby, and now he's, like, wow. Oh, wow. got opinions about Pokemon and stuff. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, that, that, that puts him anywhere between, like, four and 30 years old. <laughs> it's, so. true, it's true. It's true. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, actually, that's, that's a very good point. Um, yeah, uh, uh, well, definitely not a baby, though, <laughs> which uh, that keeps happening. I'm like, wait, wait your child is like a, a person now? They're not like a pet? Like, what, what it's happens? A, it's, a, it's a strange thing when the child goes from being this thing you got to take care of to somebody who's, who, they look back at you, 
you can see the attitudes like, oh, yeah. Yeah. now I can talk yeah. to you. Now you yeah. can understand just how, yep. Yep. how much you pissed me off. <laughs> oh. uh, but but uh, I think there was a couple of things I wanted to say. I honestly I forgot. I forgot what they were. Did you, um, were we not able to take a picture with everybody else? Oh, or? shit. Yeah. That's no, okay, though. It's okay. Okay. Sort of. I wasn't like sure if maybe they like didn't want to do a picture or something. Honestly, but... you know what? It's very easy. You know what I'll do? I'll just ask them to take a picture of themselves and send it to me, and I'll just I'll yeah, just... you can just Put it Photoshop together. it all together. Boom. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Not that I'm super vain and want as many pictures of myself out there as possible <laughs> or anything. But, no, yeah. listen, listen, Liam. <laughs> you know, the people that the people that you know, we were, were playing with, these are, you know, top level authors and and writers and stuff. So, yeah, I've noticed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So connections, man. It's good for you. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, I think that's that's it for me. Um, yep. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I got to get going as well. Okay. This is yep. fantastic. Yeah, if right. you need me for any other DMing, you let me know. Yeah, um, but, uh, sorry, real quick. You need to tell, send me your, your Venmo info or, or link in, or however. Oh, yes. Pay, yes. PayPal. Yeah, that's yes. what I've been using. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want to play more. Um, uh, casually and um, uh, intentionally and, and to like pull out all the stops at some point. Um, you know, so uh, if you guys want to play at some point, it's uh, needless to say really nice when everybody knows how the game works. It right. makes, it makes things yeah, yeah. <laughs> go much more um, at a gallop. Uh, uh, so let's do that sometime. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm let awesome. Us know, man. Okay. Trying to, uh, just, you know, again, like I was saying uh, before, the next two months, it's... it's oh, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. After that, Holiday January. Season. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yep. check this out. Somebody just. Oh, actually, Carlos has put me on. Somebody who's looking for someone to help them write a video game. And it's the thought of me. So I might have another project coming up. <laughs> so. I'll let you oh, know. great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'll catch you on the flip side. Right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.